how to jungle in season 14 has been a common question. There's a new map. When do we do the grubs? What about the herald? Is it actually useful? Do we gank? Do we farm? How do we want V9? But even after hearing these tips and videos, the biggest question remains. How do I apply these to my specific MMR? So in this video, I will give you a complete jungle coaching from silver all the way up to diamond so that there's something for every single rank with the ultimate goal of everyone reaching master. And at the end, I will include one of my coaching classes where we talked about early game to mid game transition and how to dominate in the mid and the late game in season 14 to close using a wide variety of champions and strategies. This jungle movie compilation will have everything you need to climb. Let's begin. Welcome back to a coaching video, the first one of Season 14. We have a Silver Nocturne versus a Silver Lilia. And it's a shorter one because we first, before we start worrying about macro and things like this, really need to hone down your early games because the grubs have made you all lose sight of what is good about jungling and the control we have. And we are throwing away that control for, you know, they're kind of cute, a little bit donkey looking, but you shouldn't be dying for them. So let's see what our early game pathing is like in the ELO range of Doom and maybe help some of you get gold already in this early season. Nocturne, super power pick. Lilia, also super power pick. I don't know why this player has ghost, guys. The stat sites are free. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Focus on your jungling. Copy the atomization from the best players and then you can figure things out as you go, you know, later on. But for now, just focus on your jungling. So the Nocturne, we... Can assume most people in this elo will start on the bottom side and he's going for this gank and already people are thinking you know ganking don't do it it's it's ruined it's not i mean like there was a whole thing about rengar's being unable to gank and in the main channel video coming later this week uh, you know the, the rengar just cuts across and gets a free gank I mean, like you don't need to reinvent the ganking part thing either that's exactly the same thing but at the same time you're you know you've got a victor here versus silas i understand the desire to make this impact but why waiting why are you waiting here? You know, because now, if Silas doesn't go in, you have no angle of approach, right? You're like, you're going to walk at him, and he's going to walk the other direction. Versus, hey, look, I've done this quadrant. Maybe I can gank this lane. But then don't go here, right? Cut underneath. You can track if this guy wards or not. It's very simple. You get leashed, right? And you watch the minimap. I mean, because you're focusing on your clears and practice tool before you play ranked, right? You don't need to think as much about your first clears in terms of micromanaging. Like, you don't need to zoom in to clear the monsters. You can keep an eye on the minimap. But if Silas dips down out of vision and comes back, okay, he warded. So now you probably can't approach from that angle. But you would always cut over the top lane, right? But now because the Silas has not ditched and whatever, you could easily be going, like, right now, you're waiting for this. This is a good patient gank to see right here. As he goes in, you're in this brush right against the wall, walk towards him, and now you're looking at a free flash burn, free control, free gank. Now, obviously, here... We're going to get the kill, which is good, okay? But I don't want you to results base it because it relied on the Silas going way too deep, all right? And the positioning wasn't good objectively. Now, we got the results. Good. I like the intent there of, look, I don't need to only full clear. You absolutely must head over to vukayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching bot libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungled if every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. I can look for the ganks that are that are possible before I finish my full clear. I can do the quadrant, get the gank off, win my lane uh, for the mid, and then fall back to this. Which is great because mid prior gives you grub prior if you use it properly. The Lily, on the other hand, could she have done something about this? Not really, because... You know, she's less of a skirmisher than a Nocturne is. She needs to do her full clear. And most Lilies are a little bit slow. This is pretty solid for Silver. And we see the Renekton here is pushing on up. We're basically going around the Fog of War. Look at this. Now you show. Hits that. Get the sweep to do. Boom. I love it. I love it. This is so much more advanced than we would have seen Silver in many years past. And that's not a, that's not a joke. You know, even last year, if you go watch some of the Silver videos, they full clear. They don't look up. This guy. Quadrant. Boom. Gang. The Lilia here, full sequence. Oh, actually, you know what? I should stop full sequencing, get the gank off and go back to the Krux. Fantastic. The Nocturne now knows that the Lilia was in the area, in the vicinity, and basically says, I better go for this Scuttle Crab to deny her. That's where things get a little bit difficult to unwind, right? Because you come out of base now, right? Well, not out of base. You stayed out after you gank. You're doing this. You see the Lilia. She does the gank. You know the Scuttle's going to spawn. And the Lilia 
basically at this point could easily come down to do the scuttle crab and i think once noxon does this and hits it away there's no way she's she's left this area right she has to have still either still been here or left to go to the crux and 99 percent if she was coming on down to do this she'd be doing it but i think at this point i have no issue with us kind of skipping out the grump just purely because of the nature of the gank we had. Although in my mind, once I've done this gank, I know I'm compromised versus the Lilia. So I would like to actually just go blue grump, leave the wolves out because this edge camp respawning is more valuable than the wolves in terms of, in terms of experience and gold combined. I do like that we go for this uh, scuttle crab over here. We don't have a smite, unfortunately. We see the Silas again pushing on up. And he decides to leave the scuttle crab to go for the gank. I don't have an issue with this other than the fact that there's a huge minion wave. The victor could really just relax here a little bit. Gonna easily finish off the scuttle crab and then potentially gank because of where the wave was. And now the victor's gone in because of our gank, tanked all of that minion damage. It's his fault, not yours, but you incited it. And now you don't have mid prior for the Lilia to rotate over because she does her crux and realizes that you haven't done the scuttle crab, so she wants to show up for it, right? Level four, level three, you pushed off. Or because we just, you know, sometimes it's good to leave the scuttle and go for the gank. Other times it's good to let the wave crash, let the guy chill, and then abuse that ganking angle later. Now, she gets a freebie on the bottom side, and again, a Nocturne's repeat ganking here, and I don't know why. He wants to stop the Lilia from ganking the bottom lane and getting into the Krugs. But again, none of this should be happening from his perspective. Let's see if she actually does that. She should. Blue side uh, vision. The Swirling Sea does miss here. We don't got no stacks. We're going to stack those up again. We, we have some stacks. Now we're still at three. Uh, you want to keep those stacks up as much as possible. The Zarya does hit the root there. We go for the bunking gap close into the swoop to doop Auto attack. Zarya keeps auto attacking as well. That Swirling Sea does hit here. We need one more swoop. Do we get it? Do we? Oh, she didn't commit. I think she had to full on commit. And that's where the flash is very important. You don't need the ghost at all in anything we've seen this Lilia do. But here you could just Q flash and kill the candle in 100% and retract. You're good. You don't need the ghost at all. It's silly. Just use the flash, all right? Now, the Nocturne in the meantime, <laughs> to just recap a little bit, because this is my problem with it. If you just say, right, I don't want it to get Scuttle Crab at all. I'm going to take it away because I did Blue Gromp, left the Wolves up. I do the Scuttle Crab. I let the wave crash. I let mid develop a little bit. I move on up here and I ward it. I hit the Scry's Boom over to see the Lily. Okay, I see her on Krugs. Because I've done that, I go for the gank here and I go for the double scuttle immediately. And what this also does, all right, and maybe I'm ahead of myself as well. I wouldn't leave this ward here. I don't like leaving wards here because I would assume at this point that the Lilia assumes I've done the scuttle and she's going to base. So what I want to do is snack the scuttle crab up, hit the scry's boom to confirm, gank the mid lane again because he pushed up, take the double scuttle, all right, and leave a, a ward probably here. I mean, over the wall you could. We're still looking for those, those fine points like here, here, here. There's a lot of areas to ward. Where do you think she's most likely to be seen ganking and pushing bottom lane? Probably through this. So I would just ward that up. And then your bottom lane's protected. And of course, you can loop back for these or you can just go back to base, right? And this way you take away the gank. But his pathing and his choices have given the Lilia a free scuttle crab, a free gank in the bottom lane. And sure, right? She doesn't get a kill and your bottom lane survive. But some's are burned and she should have gotten a kill. You can't operate on the sort of, you know... She didn't, so it's good. Same thing as you can't operate on the first gank being the best angle of approach because he got a kill. Gank of approach, angle of approach. <laughs> and now we go back to the mid lane here again. We use a spell shield a little bit too soon, and there's the cake. Silas is one of the best turners of fights. And now you're running at the guy with no itemization reset. You're just kind of running at him directly. Eventually, he's going to get something back now. For the amount of ganks and time we've invested into this middle, and let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. You should know what to buy. Hexplate. Hex, Hexplate. Go. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> guy's taking way too long, guys. Hexplate. Do your Axiomark kind of stuff and just win the game. You know, the strike break is gone. It's not that good. And now... We leave the base and we're going off for this, uh, the grubbies. And the Lydia, bless her soul, isn't obsessed over these grubs. She is rushing that haunting guy. It's juicy. But I still advise getting the uh, dark seal tech. It's pretty good. Let's see. Nocturne just goes for it. She's not obsessed over it. Fantastic. Silas now has a huge level 6 spike and kills the victor from it. I mean, the amount of time he invested into the mid lane for the Silas to be 310, gold 2.8, victor 2.2. You know, that's not a mid lane gap. So if you want to go and enter discords and complain about your mid laner, despite your ganks here, 
you caused this, right? Because, simply put, all you had to do was have a good angle of approach here, get the kill, cool. Do everything as you did, take the Scout of Crab, let the wave crash, let the victim not lose free HP, then gank it again strategically, prevent your bottom lane from being ganked, and then literally you have nothing to do. And the victor, you don't need to gank six times badly. I'd rather you gank one, two, three times perfectly, right? Like, perfect examples of ganking. And the first one was one of those, but a lot of the rest of the ganks just weren't that great. Now, Lilia, four close up, she's not going to scoot on all the way down here. Get that level six onto the victor, swoop de doop on the Q, and obviously we'll try to get the sweet spot damage on the next proc of the... Of the well, on any proc of your W, but obviously the true damage on the Q and the sweet spot on the W. Very important for us. And we're using that one to try and get away from the fear. And Silas shows up and actually gets that kill. So a huge PvP moment. Let's just watch that again in real time without all the preamble. So, Renekton, Forgotten Emo. As he plays My Chemical Romance, as he goes back to the top lane. We go ahead and snack this top scuttle. And now, obviously, from Red Team's perspective, we chuck the Swall Seed. I, you know, Valiant Attempt. We do have ult though. We hit our Q, which means we can get that ultimate off. We get stunned, but we'll get the ult here. There we go. And Silas can follow afterwards. There we go. Just keep auto-attacking. Keep your stacks up. Keep the true damage sweet spot in your Q hitting as much as possible. Hit that E to slow. You see the Silas rotating over here. So now she actually places quite well here. Goes for another Q. Goes for the W to create space. The Silas gap closes, gets the stuns, get the kill. It's really well done. It's honestly really, really well done. And she's 2 0 1 up, uh, will be up over 10 CS, like 12 CS here. So, yeah, we got the grubs, but the early power thing was simultaneously really good and really terrible. And the Lilia, all she did was full clear, look for the gank, go back to the clear, see that he's wasting his time, cut in, take this, gank this, you know, full sequence up, give up the grubs, loop around, get the scuttle crab, gank the mid lane, and now she's gonna go back to her camps, you know. Obviously, here you can look for these opportunities to maybe do something, but, you know, if you're low, you got a mana, no alt. They got to recognize that as well. And the Nocturne now has no level 6 at... Oh, he will get it here at 8 and a half minutes in the game. 8 and a half minutes. And his bottom lane are 3 0 one, despite the fact he hasn't interacted. So you can complain about your mid lane and all the ganks you gave him, but your bottom lane are running away with it. You see? So the grubs don't really factor in here in terms of a contest or something that's caused a lot of issues in the game. But I'm just really happy that the Lalia didn't force it. She said, look, I can't do them. The guy's going to go ahead. Whatever, man. I'll gank the lanes. I'll go back to my camps. I'll get myself a beautiful haunting, guys. Very strong. Also, again, still Dark Seal. Huge. And now she's going from the wolves. All right. <laughs> Down to the wolves. Um, into the ground. Probably having a conversation there. I, I don't know why. I mean, I understand why she's doing this. If she were high elo. Because you kind of anticipate the Nocturne getting 6 and ulting this bottom lane, right? So you really want to shadow down and line up a lane gank here. And because your bottom lane is losing and you're quite strong, you feel you can you can do something to this lane. So lane gank is great. Either Nocturne chosen, you can't gank it, or you just get a great gank anyway. And then you can take the dragon thereafter. Sure, now the next grubbies will come up, but you can reset and contest if that's something you want to do. But in the real world, Nocturne ults and goes on on the Silas again. Look at the damage that he has, and he can apply that back. <laughs> I'll take your ult as well, sir. And Caitlyn and Morgana kill the Zyra. So the Lily has got a losing bottom lane, a really inting bottom lane. Could have done something about that, I feel, with better power thing, less typing, maybe. Uh, let's have a look. Ult not up yet, but our damage is huge. We dodge, movement speed proc, and obviously you're not strong enough to run at a Morgana. Caitlyn with sums up. In this kind of moment. And she's, is she really going to use the Silas prior for this dragon? Because, you know, Nocturne at this point, she is. I, I will probably gank first, though. I will probably gank first because kill conversion ratio, right? Like, I would be moving with the Silas here. We want to get these kills 100%. We want to burn these sums. You know, like, this should be a dead Caitlyn again. It, it, the, the Lilia doing the dragon is not so good. Like, you want to kill first. Then you can easily flow back to the dragon. And this guy's just sequencing now. He's out of the game. He took himself out of the game as well. It's just really weird. Really, really odd. Yeah, but good job by the blue side bottom lane surviving both of these hardcore ganks. Nocturne now is going to go to the top side and say, Lewis, I'm going to get grubs. When would anyone have warded that that you need to control ward either? You know? Don't really need a control ward, but it is what it is. Like, I understand why you want vision to deny 
But in a way, even if it is watered a little bit, you know where they are, you know what they're doing, you have the numbers advantage at the moment. You know, you either turn to create the fight that you want, or you uh or you uh, pull off, right? Wow, well, well, sorry, not pull off. You turn to create the fight that you want, or you just finish the grubs in their face. Because here, right, there's no there's no uh, knowledge that there's no wards at all. And they're gonna hit the scribes when they see you. They see me anyway, right? They're not, there's no vision. So I understand why you place a control wood here. I just don't like wasting one. You know, you've got a scanner, use the scanner. Like you've got two charges on your scanner. Use it here in the pit where, it's con where wards are temporary and keep the control wood in a position like here, right? Where you can set a trap and see people approaching. Same with the Herald. The bush is just moved, but the same principle. And let's see what happens here. The one more gun is actually down here. The Zyra has rotated. So Lily, obviously her alt is activated here. She snacks that one up to get the drowsy. Nice W, uh, sweet spot damage. The Renekton's way out of whack. He's dead. Rylai's or Haunting Guy's doing huge work here. Silas is really, really fat. The amount of time he invested into the mid lane just shows you, that should be a swoopty duper or an auto attack, shows you that it's important to have two to three well-executed, well-timed, within the flow of jungling ganks for spam ganking for no reason. That's it. And now the grubs here are available to be taken. The red team now has a huge categorical lead that they can use on the top side of the map. Top side of the map. Bottom side of the map is, is doomed. That's why you see the gold amount is equal. And they go for this contest and it works. This is, I don't really have an issue with this either direction. Like blue side's like a good look. Things aren't going our way. We could use these grubs to push in, use our bottom lane to push in. Um, let's do that. Maybe we can get it before the red team rotates over. And the red team think, look, our bottom lane is screwed. We really need to fight for this. So it's basically like a... A 3v3 of the top side of the map, and the blue side definitely don't have the damage, the gold, the experience to do anything, and they probably should have just left it. Once you see them contest, you take the one, that means you've gotten four, you, you know, maybe you can get five, but ideally you should just leave. Nocton's like, hello, can I do something? Oh, yes, I can, but now you're going to die. It flashes out, maybe he won't die. He should die. He should die. Oh, <laughs> he lives. Uh, Caitlyn and Morgana, strong lane. They get uh, the Void Grubs onto that one. Renekton will now clear the vision away. Lily, in the meantime, can just keep farming it up. She's up 81 CS to 65. The Silas just keeps killing and keeps winning. It's not a lane you want to gank and lose. Like, if you gank it, you got to make sure it's shut down, which is why things like this gank here was great, and waiting here would have been better, and maybe you could actually shut him down. And uh, you just open the door into tragedy. Finally, we see some proper counter jungling as well. There is a ward though from the blue side So TP is committed by the victor to try and cut her off from the grub and you know, honestly Let's be real when you see the Renekton clear the ward on the grubs You probably know it's kind of warded. You don't expect the victor to not donate his TP to stop you But I'm okay with that 100% I'm doing grump and I burned the victor's TP and I didn't die That's fine now I can just translate that into a gank on the top side with the Nocton Shadows mid lane. Here we go. Do we have enough? Nope. GP ult doesn't really do anything. Nocton's not holding this wave yet. He's got nothing to do. He's got nothing to do. He just doesn't know. He's 1-3-1. He's got the hex plate, uh, experimental hex plate, which is great, but can he actually kill anyone at this stage? And that's the problem with his item. Um, well, not problem, but, you know, you, this is a... Uh, I'm ahead. I can then get Axie Mark and my ult is up every 20 seconds and everybody dies all the time because no one can deal with me. I'm in your face, I'm fisting you, I've got the objective control, I'm pushing turrets. It's the accelerated Nocturne game plan. And now he's decelerated. Now we have a TP advantage on the bottom side here. Silas makes a commitment, finally gets a shutdown onto the Caitlyn. Obviously we have the GP as well, fully committed, the Renekton's here as well. And in the meantime, while the uh, whole blue team is down here, Lily is like, okay. All right. And then I love the Zyra. Liz. She's just pushing. <laughs> Doesn't rotate. Just keeps pushing. There you go. Nocton has his ult up very shortly, so she should probably be careful there. But yeah. When everyone commits their TPs and rotates down to these fights, really, really funny. But I feel like the Lily has done a good job. To a decent degree. Her CS should be high. I feel like most junglers in this ELO, if you sequence properly and play like the Lilia with a bit more, you know, courage of your convictions, you probably have uh, the most CS in the game. Like you should be over 100 at least right, uh, right now. And I do feel like she's given a little bit too much credit to the map here, but I'm just showing you the itemization here. I mean, look at this. Th this item plus Rift Maker, absolutely massive. And remember, the passives on this 
Torment and Suffering are not the same as the two passives on Rift Maker. Rift Maker. So while they're both built out of uh, Haunting Guys, you can't build two Haunting Guys and stack them up, but you can build two items completed out of it, and they're different um, passives, right? So you're just stacking all of this together. And in the meantime, while we're talking about that one, the Nocturne's like, yes, I will hold this wave for you, my team. Let's see what he does. Misses his Q, then goes in to a Nyla, who can dash a thousand times and just kill him. Now, Caitlyn gets a kill back, but... And all of this is a domino effect, isn't it? It's all a domino effect. And the Lilia now gets another dragon for free and some counter jungling. I do like that she's starting to reach in. You know, you don't really want to overreach for counter jungling in this new season. There's a lot of rotations, a lot of fighting. People are ready to go, and the map is really open. Like, blue side map here and blue side map here are really open. So you don't want to overcommit to certain counter junglings, as you saw here. Like, we went for counter jungling. TB was committed, okay. You no, know, but here's a good one. Someone died. Take his stuff. Fall back to the objective. They could do nothing. I got the Silas. There we go. Knocked it shows up. Like, why are you showing up? Same exact thing as always, right? People said, well, you know... Do the courses still make sense? Everything I talk about in this courses I designed to go on forever. So the map has changed, but it's the same principles. But how do I gank mid lane if the map is different? It's the same thing, right? What I used to follow the mouse. Imagine it's the old map. There's a pixel bush here, right? Da 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 da. Bracket, bracket, bracket against the wall. Well, not like that. <laughs> bracket against the wall. Out in and, and swoop in, right? Now you just do the same thing. Come here, cut in over here. Touch the wall, touch the wall, touch the wall, all the way up until the second rock, and then you cut in. Same thing, just a little wider. Same principles. And the Nocturne, and people who are dying for grubs and doing this kind of stuff, none of that's changed for you. You still shouldn't be doing it, and you shouldn't have been doing it in the past either. That's why you were silver, no offense, but that's why you were. And once you fix your ganking angles of approach, you have high and tight pathing around vision that you know exists, and then you go ahead and snack some objectives, do some counter jungling, and don't int tempo advantages. You'll get to gold very, very quickly. And Nocturne... Is the best way to do it. Absolutely. Huge. Nocturne really is a power play for this ELO. And Lilia is too. She's not as accessible because it's, it's a little bit different, but she's still easy. She's still easy. And when you're in a rough position, you still have your passive, right? Fully stacked to be able to get in and out of situations. As we've seen. And now I just want you to imagine having Dark Seal here fully stacked. Kind of nice. You know, going to Rift Maker plus the Mesh Eyes, you know, Rileyes. You know, you got so much HP. So much Omni Vamp, so much scanning, get, <laughs> get, get, get movement speed from my eyes. No one can kill you. Nocturne will alter and you'll just kill him. That's why she's powerful. She's great at just absorbing pressure uh, and not kind of inting it away. Like he keeps alting onto the Lily here and now. We're having a fat discussion about atomization and general practices, but if we were to apply the same critiques that we've been doing to the Nocturne, you move on down to do this Rift uh, Herald, right? This 40 minute Rift Herald, pretty strong. We miss a Swirl Seed. The Gangplank moves on down, but look at the nature of the Pry on the lanes. Do we have TP from Silas? No, we do not. Do we have Pry on the mid lane? No. Whose bottom lane is winning hardcore? Ours. Uh, Nyla's going back to base, right? Okay, so should we be doing this? Two mid, one to support, ADC's basing, guys, no TP on the bottom side. You're on this one. It's all warded up, and again, two scanner shots. Two scanner shots here. Use the shots, man. Like, the Nocturne uses a control ward instead of just scanning the area. The Lily is sitting here doing this with no prior without scanning. If you scan it and there's no vision and you can sneak it away, it's a little risky, but you have the lead. All you do is you pull it out, and if they can test, you just run away. Like, it's it's worth a little bit of a cheeky steal, right, to prevent any bounties and to maintain the ability to push the map to end. But instead, they uh, don't recognize that the Nile has gone back to base. They don't recognize that Silas has no TP. They don't scan the area whatsoever, and then uh, they get collapsed upon and killed. So there's only so much... And gold lead will do for you <laughs> when you have when you're outnumbered to that degree. Now Nyla shows up here. Zyra is building the stupid item. Um, by that I mean it's a good item. And as you all know, I've you know she's one of my hard like the hardcore main. I have a lot of points in her. Uh, probably close to two million at this point. Two million at this point. The item second feels good, but Landry should be a rush always, 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 always. And yeah, you run out of mana a little bit, like we used to back in the day before all the mythics. But it just feels weird to build last chapter after you have your main item completed. So it's, you know, honestly, just take your, your Zack Zack Realm Spike, which is Zack Zack. There's things we could call them, those icons. I won't. But yeah, get your Zack Zack, get yourself a Leandries, slap into a Rylize, you have HP and you do the classic combo. That's the default way to play it. Uh, the, the 
this play's not very good though. She entered lane and she's missing all the spells. I mean, it, it do be that way. But yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a waste of a Rift Herald from the Lilia. Nice little throw. Now, we could use it and we could drive on in with it. Remember, if you drive into a champion, they'll get knocked up. And if you hit the turret, you get mites plus a shield when you get extricated. But now you're in the middle of three people. So, as always, before we could activate the Herald and play smart, right? You activate it, you shadow it, you hit it. But if you go too deep, you die. Now you're in it. So, if you go too deep, you're in the middle of no man's land. And they... Absolute huge throw there from the Herald situation. So Lilia gives them a free Herald, free ability to use it. Red team are like, but what if... Uh, sorry, blue team are like, but what if we just throw that lead back at you? And red team say, okay, you know, Silas can rotate up, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Which is exactly what happened. Gold lead now. Not that big still. Scuttle Crab available. Knocked in leaving base. Lilia random counter, random counter juggling. Don't know why. Shadowing a bit. Victor, is he going to face check this bush? He is going to face check this bush. That's very interesting. Uh, Zarya doesn't quite hit the E, but she gets a, the, the stacking slow on the roots. And uh, Nyla and the uh, Lilia should be able to get some kills. Nocton goes back in here to get the uh, kill. And now the Lilia should be able to deal with him actually quite easily. I am surprised she's not full on committing to kill him, but obviously you saw from the map there. You do have to be a little cautious. She, she hit her abilities. Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, unless you want to die. And well, unless they want to die, who knows? <laughs> Maybe they'll mechanically play badly. Yeah, so here if I see people moving up potentially this side, I like to move up. And especially seeing as she went counter jungle looking, she has the timers. So we know they're up, so we kill them. Take everything. Kill this guy for pushing on the top side. You know, push that in a little bit. Take this one. You got a Baron up, you got a Dragon coming up, so... Yeah, a lot of cool things we could do. I'm not opposed to counter jungling down here, but... That's because we're gonna stay down in the bottom lane, instead of uh, moving up with the Caitlyn, so... Keep all of this in mind. Oof. Mechanics are a little dodgy, though, no? Definitely a little dodgy. So one of the biggest things for this season is when, when you have Grubs. You can see on the scoreboard. You can see there on the top left? There you go, Grubbies. Now, 4-2 on the blue side. All right, the Nocturne's team has it, but having Grubs, five to six of the sweet spot, by the way, five to six, give you those mites, it makes pushing really insane. You can end quickly, especially with the Caitlyn, especially with the Renekton, especially with the Nocturne, but you've got to be able to use it. And that's why I'm okay with people like the Lilia and the Silas and so on, giving up those Grubs if it makes no sense, because the enemy team may have four, five, six, but if they can't actually walk up to a turret to use them, they're useless. It's absolutely useless. So what do you need to do is make sure that the map from red team's perspective is pushed up all the time so that blue team never get to push back into turrets and use that power that they gained. So say, for example, blue team at six here, you just keep them away from these turrets. And what do the grubs do? Literally nothing. So pushing up the map is very, very important. And that's why you see good pressure here from the red team, keeping these waves shoved up. Dragon's about to spawn. You know, Morgana's on the top side of the map here. Uh, we're going for deep vision. I like going for deep vision here. This one, Malignant, is pretty damn good. But obviously, you would have killed... You would have killed him anyway with, with Leandries. I don't think it really matters that <laughs> much. Malignant's versus bait on most champions. Um, it, it just has a low win rate because the build path and the stats aren't primed for level 6. They're really primed for level 11 or ultimate usages once you've already got one item. So, just keep it in mind. You look at most champions, like... like you can definitely go Malignant's first and Karthus, but the win rate is terrible. Like, it's terrible in Fiddle as well. Uh, there's better ways to play. We're still figuring that out. And we'll, we'll see how things go with the new buffs. So I'm not talking too much about it because next patch, next week, this could all be different. You know, with new items, it's always a, a quick moving scenario. Like, Nocturne's just in the base now. All right, probably waiting for itemization. You know, he spent way too long in base. Like, look at this. All right, he respawns uh, for it here. Okay, there we go. Waiting, waiting, gets his Warhammer. Now goes, he doesn't know what to build. Like, he's not sure what to build. And if in doubt, just Hex played it up. Guys, Hex played it up. Get yourself a Black Cleaver, get yourself a Sterex. Fine, absolutely fine to go that in games where you're behind. You know, slap in a GA, and you're good to go. You got good tenacity, more of Mortius, all the usual stuff. It's, it's, it's fine. But the idea is to get Hex played, get ahead, and, you know, build into a bit of lethality. Axiomark, we've got here... Uh, Pretty AP heavy comps, Edge of Knight's going to be massive. Now you see like he's doing some work here, but imagine with a bigger lead. You didn't need to heal, honey, but thank you so much. That's why red team here, 
Again, another throw moment. The game's still closer than it really should be, I feel. 8,000 for enemy ADC. Our Caitlyn's got a huge lead, but it's not as big as I thought. 1,400 only, 1,500? Thought Caitlyn would have had a much bigger lead. Space gliding Caitlyn on the heels of victory. Maybe. Or defeat. But yeah. Yeah. Silas's lead over the uh, victor is profound. And the Lilia is up 2k on the Nocturne, so you can't exactly say mid-gap. Definitely jungle gap here. Now all you gotta do, 100%, is control your camps, war deep. The Zyra is going a little bit too ham here, a little bit of a face check. That could have very easily have been a dead Zyra. Probably should be, you know? Like, I would be pulling the trigger on this. Like, who's who's waiting for this? Obviously the Nocturne doesn't have ult, but... Oh, imagine if he had actually Mark had the lead, Ultimate Hunter was fully stacked nicely. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Zyra just walked into their entire territory to try and ward with no help whatsoever, with no one in position. <laughs> and lived. Yeah, so red team, when I said push the map together, I like what Desire is doing in terms of... Okay, not that, I don't like that. But, guys, can we just do the bear in an end? Like, why are we running around farming? Lily, why are you farming? Why, why, why? Let's go, group up, kill them, take the bear and end the game. You don't need to walk around here, you know? He hit no plants. Now she dies. Red team are like, yo, you're super, super low HP. Gangplank shows up as well. Going AD Gangplank, not AP Gangplank. But yeah, Lilia. See, 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 see. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> and Silas is not even in the picture. TP is up when? 30 seconds? Now, just as a quick note, because this game, as I said, is a shorter game. The Barons are much harder to contest. So even here, you know, you think, okay, look. If you're blue team and you see two to three people doing the Baron, and maybe you have two to three people yourself... It's a lot more difficult to take. There's mechanics now that, that do damage and, and kind of disrupt the team doing it. So you can very easily rotate and get a lot of pickup kills here. But unfortunately, for the uh, blue team, that will die. You know, trying to kill the Nyla, trying to kill the Zyra. They should have just killed them very, very quickly. Zyra's out of the, Zyra overcommitted, kill her. Nyla, kill her. Take the Baron. They all rotate, kill them. Unfortunately, and I don't recommend you guys do this, the FF. This game is not one you needed to FF if you're blue team because you got such a fed bottom lane. But, uh, you know, Victor and Nocturne definitely are the two people, the two reasons why this game is unwinnable from their perspective. Right, it's time for the complete gold coaching for season 14. We'll go through each MMR. In this one, we have Diana versus Warwick, who, you know, yeah, he's not really a champion a lot of the time. I agree, he's a top laner mostly, but... Season 14 has enabled them to jungle once more, and if you're struggling to use them to get to Diamond, I hate to break it to you, it's a you issue, the champion is more than capable, Dina always good. With her, it's a case of, you know, the Nash's Tooth, the Storm Surge, the Zonya's combo, but overall, you know, once you solve itemization issues, you're absolutely good to go, and again, in most cases in these MMR ranges, your itemization does hold you back and it is suboptimal, but it's not necessarily going to make you hard stuck, unless your optimization is, you know, really left field. So we have a Diana doing a full clear starting on the bottom side, I assume. We got the Warwick doing the blue buff grump into the wolves. Obviously, you know, pets enabled this AoE clear, but you still don't see people use it that much. Shin Chao's are a good example as well. Like, hey, I want to do blue side and a red. You know, I can do red side, but ideally you want, like, Three camp action, you know, but if you have to full clear because there's nothing to force on the map, please, even on gold, don't force it. Control your own econ, don't get cheese, don't get counter jungled. 227 cross for Diana, and now Warwick, see, I kind of like this, he has a look here, he sees, all right. Lux is pushing up, Viz is over here, new ganking angle from season 14, look at the range we got to close. So why would you go from the bush? What gives you a better angle of approach? Going around the outside, yes? You see there with the mouse. Obviously, if you track whether she's dipped down to ward or not, then you know it's not. Talk about this in the courses a lot. So just have a good angle of approach. Also worth noting, as you see there, the Fizz is level 2, the Lux is level 3. So the Fizz lacks his Urchin Strike. You really want to have, and if you don't really know what they're doing, which I guess I just had a side thought, you don't always know what people are doing. In this ELO range, in terms of abilities 1 through 3, like sometimes a Vlad won't take Sanguine Pool level 3, uh, others will just, like, obviously for safety, always have it. It's a question of, 
do you want your lane to be level 2 or level 3? And I think Warwick waits too long, because obviously here, she doesn't have the W at this stage, but it's more like I want Fizz at level 3 to have Q, W, and E, as well as Ignite and Flash, so that we can full combo in. Like, he can dash in, he's got the tricks to avoid the spell, he's got his bleed damage passive, he's got the Ignite, that's a kill we can get. So if you're going to go ahead and gank this, right, either gank it at level 2 before Lux hits it so that Fizz also hits it because obviously it's range versus melee, so he's pushed in, or wait a little bit longer for level 3, but then I always hate that, right? I always hate that because you're wasting crucial time, and now Diana sees this while doing her wolves, knows exactly where you're going, and it's doomed. That's why, that's why it's always good to just start topside by default, even as a Warwick, because now if you do the red side quadrant, which you can do 100% a coach Warwick's and they gain a lot of LP just by rethinking this. And now you go do this exact same play and you burn her sums, which again is, is a good gank. It's good to burn sums 100%. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm talking about more kill threat. Now you go cross down here and now you have your whole blue side relaxed. No stress of invade. No worries in the world. But as soon as you know, ah, oh, Diana gets leashed and I get leashed and we're both going in the same direction, I'm less inclined to go for this gank until I've taken the red. Yeah, you can do raptors and then loop in, but I really just want to get the red 100% because then I can go for this gank and I'm not feeling pressured, you know, through any means from the counter jungling of the Diana, the invade of the Diana, anything like that. Now, though, he should feel the pressure and a good jungler is saying, hey, Warwick's compromised. Hey, Warwick has to go to his whole red side. Hey, I've got this new Scryer's Bloom, and now obviously Fizz is here. Do you want to go for this invade necessarily and make things happen? Or do you not? And that's the question. Diana decides, yes, she wants to. Warwick obviously is like, well, you know, I'm not even going to do the red. Let's see who wins this fight. Oh, you bet off more than you can chew. Flashes. He has Q. He has Q, but he's not using it. He's not using it. Um, he's walking into the bush with E. <laughs> I, I'm a little off. Like, I'm sorry. We have to watch this. Oh my goodness gracious me. Okay, so right. You understand that you should clear the top side, gank this, and now you can fall back to a quadrant without the stress of being invaded. It's a good thing, yes, especially when you start on the same side. Secondly, if you want to wait for level 3, feel free to do the red first and then go for the gank. Nice. However, as I said, the flash is a good gank because we see the fizz here. Ding level 3. Boom. Now he has flash ignite, all in potential, no flash on the Diana. So, uh, sorry, in the Lux. So he spaces well. There you go. Watch this. She steps up. She chucks out the shield. She gets it. We wait for the shield to expire, hopefully. And then we can go trickster, flash, all the way in. And we should have one dash plus ignite and auto attack. And one more. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. In the meantime, the Warwick here should actually stick to the Diana. I mean, we do win a lot of these fights. We've got this E Prime. We're absorbing all of this damage. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Right? We do another Q. We're auto attacking. Water attacking. She's got nothing. Right? For a little bit. Obviously, she's going to have that Q come off cooldown. And it's going to be really tight. But your auto attacks heal you. And you can still flash her Q. So as long as you avoid that Q, you're good. Uh, I don't like anything that's happening here anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, you guys know I don't like these things. There, he flashed it. So why not flash into her, knowing that you just avoided that Q, and then start biting and chomping away, knowing that she has nothing now. Nothing. The final thing she had was Q. So if you flashed over, chomped her with your Q, and now your E comes off of, of cooldown again here, right? Five seconds. I think we win that. So he flashes in the other direction, and what this means for gold elo very typically is the power of body language, which is why we like PTA and Warwick and Champions like this. Because the important thing is, right, that if you chunk someone with PTA and your full burst combo in this elo, and say you take away half their HP, a lot of the time they just leave. Like, whoa, whoa. A lot of the time they just leave. Like, whoa, whoa, whoo. That's a lot of damage. I need to leave. Not realizing that you've blown everything, you've got nothing left. And then they can just out sustain you over a long fight. You know, mental games, mental games. But I liked the Diana's idea of, hey, he's low, let's abuse it. The Warwick played defensively well. They went at it with a fist. And mechanically, the Warwick should have won. Diana should have basically said, well, he's compromised. Let me finish my quadrant. I'm not going to worry about the Warwick because he's totally confused. Maybe I can gank this. Maybe I can gank the fist here on the engage. At least I get a Scuttle Crab. I can go down to take this Scuttle Crab. This guy's probably going to finish this whole top quadrant so I can take his Grub on respawn that spawns at 4 minutes 20. Talk about this all the time. And then, hey, maybe I could gank bottom lane as well. 
And then in theory for Dino, you could stay out even longer if you wanted to protect these camps on the respawn from counter jungling. Me personally, I always go for that play because this is a strategic coin flip of PvP. If you're Rengar, if you're Kindred, if you're things like this, yeah, go for it. Master Yi even, go, go, kill him. It's easy, free food, you take everything, cool game. If you're playing something like a Diana, a Zyra, even a Hecarim will farm your nature, just take your experience advantage, take your double scuttle, take your counter jungling, gank the bottom lane, new angles of approach here, look at this juicy road, and then control your camps from being counter jungled. The enemy jungle is going to be down 20 CS, have absolutely no KDA, who's winning? You as a Diana or the Hecarim or whatever, 100%. Now, she's got 978, 1000 cash money gold, so she stays out here. The Warwick also stays out here. And now loops all the way back to the top lane, looking at this Renekton, who has a pickaxe in his pocket. I don't know why you would go for this whatsoever. But the fact of the matter is, you see the difference in slowness. I mean, look, the Dyna is effectively doing it. Obviously, track your flashes. The Misfortune has her heal. She has no flash here. Caitlyn's going in. Uh, Zyra will have cooldowns. No matter, though. Ooh. I like it. Just not in the right... It's not in the right order, but I like it. Now, Warwick goes top lane here, actually. And now you're going to say, but Vrkayu, results spaced. Yes, you got to kill. It's 5 minutes 15 with no base level 4. <laughs> you should be level 5 at 5 minutes. You know, like the kind of strategies we're talking about in this season are full clear, scuttle crab, maybe gank, maybe gank, reset, take scuttle if you can, but I, most likely it's gone. Take another camp, take another camp, cut in and take the grubs. Like you should have had a base, a full sequence, a scuttle crab, a gank, taking two respawn camps, as the grub spawn. Think about that. No jungler here had remotely that amount. Diana was close, but she's on the wrong side of the map and she's level four. So as a gold jungler, please listen to these, these timers, these strategic break-even points. You gotta start to get that in your mind. And in Platinum, you gotta keep that in your mind a bit more frequently. And in Emerald, you gotta every game access it, right? Like always hit those timers perfectly. And then in Diamond, of course, now you gotta combine your decision making with your timing, with your mechanical prowess, and uh, basically that's like a loosey goosey, easy to climb way to move to master tier. And uh, you know, Renekton is just like, yes, yes, take the grubs. It's like the work hasn't based yet. What is it with this elo? We had an Amuma coaching uh, not too long ago. Guy stayed out with like 7,000 gold. It, why? You know, like you're not gonna beat a level six Renekton when you're level four. The dude is absolutely juiced. You've killed him, but he's got Doran's blade and everything. Now Diana sees this. All right, and says, okay, my wolves are up, my grump should be up in a short time frame, but there's a dragon available. Okay, but now all of her sequencing is out of whack. Now, sure, she can go to the top side. Does it work? Honestly, go for Krugs here. Oh, bro, you need Tiamat. You have had Tiamat for a while. What are we doing? Oh, straight into his jungle, please. Not even, don't even go for the dragon. Screw the dragon. Go into his jungle. Take everything. Absolutely eviscerate this guy. Because you can anticipate by his parting, okay, it looks like he's going to Krugs, as I said. No ways, right? But he does. So you go ahead and take this, okay? And obviously pay attention to lane prior. Like, I always say, go for these counter junglings, uh, you know, but watch mid, watch bot, know if you're going to have to leave and things like that. Like, there is always risk in those plays. But I don't necessarily want to just go for a coin for Dragon. This is not a... It's not the best use of your time always. So the only time I would do this Dragon in this situation is if I know that the Warwick has taken his blue side, or there's only the blue buff, then it's like, well, you know, the dragon's more valuable, I can gank it, I can I can loot back around, and, and so on. But yeah. No. What? Like, I'm just looking at the Dan, looking at the camera, having a chat to you guys, because obviously, you know, it's good to do this. And this guy's like, what if I don't go back to base and try and fight a Renekton, you know, level 7, uh, with a half fury bar, and I'm level 5 with no base? The guy has literally a 2,000 gold lead over you because you haven't spent any gold. Now Dian is like, well, he's dead. I better take his camp. So yeah, but now the Warwick's going to come out of base, finally with this Tiamat. And the fact that we're only level 5 here, no, this won't even give us 6, I feel is an absolute tragedy. Oh my goodness, he didn't. He thinks they're gone already. He thinks they're gone. She's still not level 6. Okay, flash in all in auto attack. One more, but she will die for this... I'm not a fan of that either. I'm not. I have a, I'm having a lot of, like, my body is reacting to this jungling in a very negative way. You hear the sounds that are emanating. I, I'm not happy about it either, trust me. I have to listen to this in editing and post-production, but 
What are we witnessing? And now that most of you in gold are going to say, yeah, this is, they're terrible, man. They always beat me. My laners are inting, but I play better than them. You don't. No offense to you, but be brutally honest with yourselves. Go watch a replay. How often do you not hit level 5 by 5 minutes because you understood the first sequence? How often are you not ready for grubs at level 5? How often do you not counter jungle when you could? How often do you stay out way too long and take fights with laners who are really far ahead? Like, you can't even deal with Renekton. He can 2v1. There's no point. How often do you give up uh, free dragons because of these things? How often does it look like this when you wallow around the map? Maybe you get a kill but die for it. I guarantee you, all of you are doing at least 50% of everything I just said on a, on a game by game basis. So start there. Which ones of those things are you doing for the early phase and fix it? Stop doing it. <laughs> That's the advice. Stop doing it. That'll be a, a, a supreme donation of cash money. No. It's important to understand why, okay? And so hopefully you've understood when I've explained these, thing, explained these things, why. Because why do we not attack a guy that's three levels up on us without a base? Well, that's logical. Hopefully I don't have to explain that. But why not stay out so long? Because you lose the possibility to actually make impact somewhere else with strong atomization. With the ability to control your camps, get objectives, counter gank, and track. There's none of that. It's like you were ganking a Renekton again. And here, I don't care that we get the kill. I mean, like... The broken clock is right twice a day. I've said that before. And the people have told me, what do you mean? Once a day. Just stare at them like, it's PM and AM, man. And they don't understand that. Uh, that was a weird conversation, let me tell you. So here, again, the obsession over grubs. Kill conversion ratio, correct? We got a kill. We converted into an objective. But the problem is, all right, um, there's two people here. There's your Urgot, low health, low mana. And of course, your Fizz is down here. Now, I understand your pain. When a Fizz rotates to the bottom side, when the objective's on the top side, I hate it too. But your bottom line is getting fed, and you already have three Grubbies. So don't be Grub greedy, all right? Go back to your camps, take all your camps, reset, go to the bottom side, contest the second dragon, give them three Grubs, they're going to waste time doing it. You got a lot of gold to get, 1500. And your Urgot could just use a push out because Renekton has TP up, so you should be tracking that. Instead, he greets for this, and because he's not tracking whatsoever the Diana, he just ults a level 8 Lux. Like, he has no sense of preservation, self-preservation. The guy's a level down on a Lux. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can ult and kill her. In what world, in what universe can you do that? Maybe one. Maybe one universe, where Warwick actually has the numbers of a Briar and the mobility of Akram, and, you know, he's unstoppable in every ability. Now, because, as I said... The Warwick doesn't help the Urgot push out with the TP available from the Renekton, and he dies in the looks, the Dian is able to snack some stuff up. Now, I know Warwick is a super duper chase down hunter here. Do you think he honestly goes straight for the grubs? I think because of the elo he does, but at the same time, I still want to ensure that I don't give them five. So I'm still looking to do at least one or two, ideally two, of these grubs, okay? And I feel like I'm strong enough to be able to handle the Warwick at this stage. And Lux is prior, Renekton is prior. So I think we should start it up and then assess the fight as it comes around. We've got a smite up, so make sure you definitely save that smite for a contest. She doesn't, she saves it. She uses a smite on a thing that she could have gotten anyway. So that's one we've gotten. Let's see. Warwick will always contest this. Look at him. Now we don't have smite. So he takes that one. So that's four. Flashes away for the grub. This is not worth it. Go watch the main channel. Jungle, uh, how to be a jungle god. I talked to you guys about the grubs and the best way to do it. Okay, we do get that one. Urgot's able to finish off some stuff. The Fizz now shows up, and uh, there will be a cleanup crew. Lux should have rotated, I agree with you. But please do not look at this and say the Warwick was correct. This fight is not good for anybody. It's not good for us to watch. It makes us sad. It's not good for the Warwick. He loses his flash. His gold amount is 4.1. She's 4.2. Both junglers are having a very horrific game. But the Diana, this was a better decision by the Diana. Unfortunately, Lux didn't come back over, but the Warwick should not have entered this. Because what if... The Warwick straight up dies. <laughs> Alright. What if the Warwick dies there? Gets nothing. Gets no grubs. You know, what if the Urgot also dies? What if Lux does stay? You don't know these things as a Warwick. So just do your sequence, control your shit. You got three. You know, counter jungle the Diana, get some deep vision, set up for the dragon. There's a lot of econ being left on the map when you just coin flip and flash and use everything on the grubs. And the main thing here is that there's no five or six grubs because you don't get the mites anymore. 
So Diana decides to, okay, look, wasting all your scanner seconds or six of your scanner seconds here is pointless. You know, what if it was warded, say, here? you got to use it as you approach, right? you got to control what here. Great, so scan here already so that you know if they see you enter this bush or not. Diana's low. Fizz is rotating down. There's a Caitlyn. We're forced to flash out. Zyra's support is roaming to the mid lane. He has Warwick now, and uh, Thresh is in the base. Lux is top lane. Lux has no TP, so you don't have the numbers advantage. I'm honestly curious how this pans out. I feel like the Warwick's terrible, terrible jungling doesn't get punished enough. And there was a post on Reddit about a Ramus who was like, just spam gank your bottom in 1800 times, and like, he's the same level. Interestingly, I had a Ramus against me do the same thing. Um, fortunately, it was a much higher MMR, but he was doing the same thing. I was up 56 CS, 56 CS by 13 minutes because he did that and two levels. If someone spam ganks terribly and stays out too long and commits too many resources for stupid things, it keeps dying. They should be down 50 CS to you. Maybe you lose an objective or two just because they have numbers. Fine, cool, doesn't matter. But they should be down at least a level, two levels to you. 50 CS plus at least something objective-wise. Like if they're doing grubs, you take a dragon. If they're doing grubs again, you take another dragon. You know, that should always be the case. So if the Warwick is playing like this against you and you're the diner thinking, man, you know, like look at this though, Vakai, like I'm one, two, three, he's one, three, three. It's not even that big of a difference. That's on you. We could have counter jungled this twice. We could have dove in this three times. We could have just left this whole thing alone. We just didn't sequence properly or impact the map properly. Like there's no reason that we're only at 15 CS. Um, you know, there's no vision control, there's no order, there's just emotional jungling all the time. So in gold, that's a big issue. Now the thing is, the gold lead is equal. Caden's out of position, Mark does hit this ult here, which is obviously good. Diana goes in here, hits that ult, forces a flash from the Fizz, we get that kill. Now we're going to try and kill the Warwick. The backline is the Misfortune. This is a long fight, obviously, and Warwick's pretty good at this. And now, obviously, with the fact that he's Warwick and you're Diana with the not good build. That's what I was going to get to. So right there, you actually lose out because you build. Storm Surge first is not that great. But Nash's first into Storm Surge, that's good. So Diana with DPS there and auto attacks to amplify your passive, plus having 90 AP. And while it's not the same as this, would have maybe put, put her in a better position to kill that Warwick. You understand? But at the same time, when you look at it, you're like, wow, you know, we're equal gold. Why are you equal gold? Why are you equal gold to this Warwick? What did we miss? And I think we've covered quite a lot that we've missed. So, as always, I did cover a... Uh, uh, I have a jungle detail thing that, you know, part of the private Discord, they, they weekly get a, a, a video I make, a custom video that I don't release publicly. I encountered, because it's new season, so everyone high is like Emerald 1, Diamond, right? Uh, I encountered a uh, challenger duo, 18-0, uh, and 0, on a jungle mid combination, running Hecarim on fresh accounts and things like this, and uh, I beat him. I beat that Hecarim, and I was like, really, I just zoned in, clocked in, played Zyra jungle. And I knew what he was going to do, I anticipated what he was going to do, I cut him up from everything, and every time he made one tiny mistake, I took something. And then eventually you just go win con, obviously. But it's the same kind of thing with Diana, except you don't have to go win con because you're a carry jungler, you are the win con, right? There's no reason that a Warwick in these situations should ever get the best of you, should ever be the same uh, level. And the Renekton here had a huge advantage. Did we counter gank this one time? Did we give him the Herald? Did we give him the Mites? Did we give him the, the Grubs? Because if the war can run up here and die twice, or get chunked twice and go here, go here, go here, go here, and win not counter jungling, I got a problem with that. And as a Diana, you should have a problem with that as well. So now we're 3 4 3. And the war gets a free herald. So this is where the game starts to devolve and go downward. The spiral occurs. And there's not a lot you can do about it. Because Warwick is currently in his element in a good spike. Why are we contesting this when we cannot get it all? Just control your camps, but your camps aren't in a good sequence. Hold this wave, mid lane maybe. Bottom line is shoving up, so we're worried about a fizz rotation, and there he is. You know, can we shatter this and help them take our camp? Like, you're completely on the back foot all of a sudden. And we were we were fine, you know, and now we're on the back foot. It, it pff, shouldn't happen. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to farm. There's no one to make a pick on, because red team is actually playing this quite well. Well... Not the Zyra here, this is pretty stupid. <laughs> but the rest of the team are just waiting for the Urgot to come out. The Warwick does the red there, which is dumb, unless it's like fringe itemization. Let's see what he spends. No, man. Like, did you need the red? You didn't. 
Base, come out, take the red, join your team. Big problem, Jungle God video, main channel, have a look. I, I show you a good example uh, from my games as well. Jungle's not in the picture. Now imagine blue team, that kills the fist, but imagine blue team just aces your entire team here and you're by yourself. Whereas if you were there, you could have won it. That's the problem with the Warwick's decision making there. And he's lucky. <laughs> is this really the moment of flash hook? Is this really the moment to flash hook in a 2v3? Yeah, you know, most of League's problems will be solved if we could all just count to five and recognize which number is higher than another. You know, that's it. That's all you got to do in League of Legends. Hey, they have three. We have two. All right, we're not going to fight unless our lead is big enough, which is rarely the case in, in a game where you're all equally matched. But if you're level 17 and everyone else is like level 12, yeah, sure, like, you know, you know 1v3. But that's knowledge of champion, right? And now it's a bit of a fiesta, isn't it? So the red team will group up here. Blue team, how do you come back into the game here? Control your camps. Don't die for random objectives. Push the map out. Make, pi make picks before the objective. And let the red team tilt into you is the most important thing. Do not int for dragons. Do not int for barons. Do not int for anything. Oh, Warwick's going to juice that up. Oh, he's so quick. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And Adyan has now got what? Rocket Belt. No. Nash's Storm Razor. Sonya's. You'll thank me later. Enjoy. That's how you win on this champion right now. Rocket Belt is definitely usable, but it it's, doesn't do anything there at all. You need DPS against a comp like this. You need DPS, not burst. You're not bursting the work down. You're not bursting the work down. You're in a sustained fight, so Nash's Tooth will always be better. Your Storm Surge... Uh, storm Surge... Uh, yeah, that's it. Storm Surge, Storm Razor. You know, that'll be great. How is Ogot now remotely even... <laughs> <laughs> the Warwick was spam ganking top lane, and yes, now the Ogot is doing things, but that's not how it played out. You saw Renekton won all of those early trades, and Diana just failed to capitalize. That's really it. And from this, obviously, this is a free Baron, okay? And then they're going to respawn again, push it down mid lane. Let's have a look to see what, what happens here. Like, they're all reasonably booted up and together. So obviously, it's going to come down to a straight up fight. Fizz goes, oh, Fizz and Warwick go in and just one-shot the Lux here. Warwick's obviously got the good item. Yeah, they're just a, too big a lead. Dinah kills a Misfortune, Dinah kills a Fizz. You know, numbers advantage now, 3v2 but HP. So yes, numbers are important, but you also got to look at the HP. But look at the red team here. Not overcommitting, they back off. We don't have numbers. All right, cool. If you've got a lot of itemization as well, you can buy it. It's best to go reset. Like, they're good as 2.5. So his gold lead isn't yet realized. It's in theory his gold lead. It's like stock options. You know, look, as a Zyra player, I can tell you right now, there's no reason why a Diana jungle should not be eviscerating you. Like, Diana destroys Zyra's when played properly. Really, she does. She does. But most Dianas tend to not really know that. And so you can combo them and you don't die. But a good Diana will kill you. This is not so bad from blue team though, you know? Like I'm looking at the timeline, it's not so bad. You're just waiting for them to tilt into you. But the lead is so big, you need them to make a mistake. And like when your game reaches that point, it sucks. You don't want a game to reach the point where you need them to make a mistake first. That's just, just not a good way to play the game. Uh, all right. Now Diana compromises on her positioning. You don't know where anyone is, like we see, but they don't, you don't know. Now you're out of the fight. That's a free dragon gone. I'm okay with the red team. If you're in the Warwick situation, you're taking it a little bit slow. You know this ELO. Uh, just play by the books. Don't coin flip too much. I think we should be shadowing this. Warwick, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Nice Zyra ult. Warwick's not here, but he's able to get in with the R. That's great. Priority target killed. Everyone goes in on us, but we have good itemization. Plus, uh, we need to press this active, by the way. Press is the active. Q chomp at the same time. Well, you Q chomp that. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I think they just wrap it up tidy. Yeah, TP bot. Yeah, nothing. Nothing else happening. So, as always, 
Please understand that early game jungling phase, it will definitely make you better when you can think like that. For mid game, late game, really standard stuff. All the videos I've, I linked below are still good, talking about mid game macros. If you need help there, mid game macros are always linked in the description below for these videos. But don't die for grubs. Grubs do not win this game, trust me. But treat them like any objective within the flow. Don't forget to counter jungle, have action on other lanes, because the Diana just really didn't have lane impact. Huge. Welcome to the complete coaching guide for Platinum Season 14. We have a Graves vs. a Nocturne jungle. Hopefully you've enjoyed the low elo total coaching and the gold total coaching. Basically, we're just approaching it from a context of how must you jungle in Season 14, what's changed, what you should be focusing on. And most of the time, it's don't die for grubs, but we'll see what this game holds for us. We have a proxying Garen vs. Pantheon. Nocturne starting on the bottom side here, and finally, you know, at this point in time, we've learned not to let the proxying ruin our lives. That's very important, obviously. Don't let proxying ruin your jungling. We have good wards here on the wolf camp for the Garen, so he'll see when the Nocturne comes up. I'm still not a fan of seeing these junglers start on the bottom side. Like, I know some challenger junglers do it, but there's a reason for it, right? It's a matchup thing. It's an avoidance thing. It's a tempo thing. It's a level 6 thing. But in this elo range, I still think it's simple just to start top side, go down for clear scuttle. If you can cut into gank here or here, do it. And the nice thing about the new map is you can cut in through here, right? So it's a much quicker cut into river. And then obviously, if bottom lane's gankable, you do that. And ideally, you've got a full clear scuttle and a gank or so. Reset, boom, boom, and now you can cut it for grubs. Almost every time. And if the enemy jungle is bad, or just, you know, more gold and just average platinum level, you know that they will come at your grubs level 4 and you're level 5 with a reset, so you win the fight, right? That's kind of the goal here. So Nocturne now tries to get into the Garen's face a little bit. Kind of, he's compromised. The Grave sees this. Now, I'm not a fan necessarily of going for the invade, but I am a fan of going for ganks. Problem is, it's an Orianna with flash. She will have that movement to be proc that she has with her, with her W, so let's see if she uses that one. Just turns it around. And then in the meantime, the Nocturne's in the Grump, so the Graves tries to gank an Orianna with a movement speed thing that can also slow you with flash up. Sometimes phase rush and a, and a Vladimir. So who exactly, who exactly is killing the Orianna in this situation? No one. So finish off your red, finish off your Krugs, come out of the top side here, the Nocturne's gonna be compromised. Why is it so important? Because you're level 4. You're level 4 to his level 3, and you've got Garen Pryo, right? The Orion is just going to reclaim the Pryo. Now we're just sitting and, and like, yes, 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 we are sneaky. But it's a Nocturne. The guy can actually fist pretty damn well. And I've seen enough Nocturnes uh, win random fights here. Look at this, though. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Look at it. Yes! Fight me, Graves! Come on! Fight me! Graves, come. We fight. Come on, Graves. Go clear up. Go for the crab. Push it up. Use your Garen Pryo. And if you truly cannot win this fight, leave. Most of the time in Platinum, if you full clear and get this, you can get it and get out before the enemy jungle finishes their clear or figures out what they're doing because they're still Platinum, right? There's no reason to give this up. Now, the Nocturne makes a big mistake. His mistake here, and this is the thing we talk a lot about in the courses and so on, is if we go for this, all right? Now, you don't know what's warded and what isn't warded, but I really like going for the red. So I would hit this probably down to see where the Garen is, and then maybe I would think about doing this. Now, in this case, if you're truly worried about the Garen just a little bit, don't. That's fine. I, I respect your fear of the Garen plus the respawn of the, um, the Graves plus the Vlad Collapse. I respect that. But in a regular game where you see everyone and you have stock and everybody, go and take his red. Because now the guy has a choice. Do I go to my red Krugs, assuming you haven't taken them? Or do I go to the bottom side and try to get my respawn of the Gromp and the Wolves? The problem is it's 355. So, yes, by the time he does this, this will be available. But where's the Nocturne? Did he take my red even? Is he resetting just to prevent the counter jungling? You don't know. From Grace's perspective, you don't know. So, the Nocturne has all the power here. He chooses just to go back to his camps, but again, he also should have finished his camps. Like, both junglers should have full clears done. And we shouldn't be talking about what we do after this 4-minute play. That 4-minute play should have been two level 4 junglers fisting each other to the death, gladiator style. Uh, I don't know if that one gets an Oscar, though. And then the Nocturne just taking the red and leaving. The Nocturne takes the red and goes back to base. Or the Nocturne drifts behind, controls this, because in Platinum we still assume that they're obsessed with the red. The Graves goes for the red, we get this one. We see the Graves now go top lane, then we can either gank the bottom lane, probably gank the bottom lane, and then take his Grump and Wolves, and just give up the grubs. 
I'll give up the grubs because the best thing here for you as a Nocturne is six early. I will give up the grubs when the Graves does this just so it gets a kill, just so I have a full clear, kill on the Graves, take his red, take the scuttle, gank the bottom lane, take this, take this, reset. And now obviously I can go to the bottom side here, get level six and up bottom lane. That's what we want to do. And, you know, if that costs me grubs, it costs me grubs. Because the second spawn grubs are the things I really want to contest and fight over. If I'm not strong enough for that, that sucks. But this is also good. You know, like, we beat the Graves one-on-one. -on -one, we rotate to the bottom lane here. We get the kill onto the Lux. We don't get an assist, but it's good to show up and support. I know it sucks when you don't necessarily get the juice you want from these early ganks, but we like it. This plant hits. We should see that, which means we know that the Graves most likely going to the grubs. But, like, you don't know. You don't know that he's doing this. You don't know. So what I would do is just go take his blue side. I would assume he's going to the grubs and I would just go take his blue side. If he does in fact show up, I'd be like, what the hell? Why is he here? That would be my legitimate reaction. And I would just leave. But I, I've, I've at least gotten the grump. And then I can go back to base. And then I can say, well, thanks for the free grubs. You know, I'll enjoy grubby. And you do. So his mistake would be his undoing, because not only do you take this away and ward this up and get this bottom lane to win, they should be basing right now, base, 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 you base, 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 you and the spore go up to the grubs, uh, you can gank this first, or gank this first, or just take it away, the graves is like, oh, my grub is gone, maybe he solos a dragon, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but don't start this dragon if you don't know you can take it, so it's the same as a gold video from yesterday, the, the, there's, there's just this uncertainty over these plays, like they don't know what to do, and I'm e easily telling you what I would be doing in game, Right? And at this point, I hopefully should be able to do those things. But in the in the Jungle Club Discord, in the private Discord, you see people talk about this all the time of every rank. Once they figure out what I'm talking about in-game, their flow is just like this, and enemy junglers are never a factor. And it comes out to team fights and general jungle practice, but I don't see why Nocturne has just stopped sequencing. Like, you should be, without a doubt, what? Up 20 CS? You should be getting free grubs right now. What's this dragon obsession? The dragon obsession is just as dumb as a grub obsession. All objectives are not worth dying over. It's not worth taking an objective with a coin flip element where you've not compromised all your sequencing. It's just not worth it. It isn't. End of story. And the Nocturne's now going for this dragon. Let's see what happens. So Twitch goes and has a look. Puts this over here. Graves is having a look now. Now you're watching this. Is the Nocturne on it? He's twice, twice he started this and pulled off. What a colossal waste of brain power and time. And I don't care that we get kills here. Good job, Zillion and Twitch. You made this happen. Now can we do the dragon? Find him. Find him. No. I'm irritated. I'm irritated. So, <laughs> to, to help you platinum people in this complete culture, to give you a bit of a summary, focus on your sequencing, look to use experience and gold spikes to take something away from the enemy jungle. Begin the idea of jungle denial. Can I take your camps away? Can I take away the grubs? The Graves did a dummy, but he was able to get his red and his Krugs back after the death. Once he'd done this, he knew the Nocturne was bottom lane, so take the grubs, they're free. You're level four, but they're free, you can do them, cool, right? If the Nocturne then does a dragon, then you get to counter jungle him as well. So while we're talking about the Nocturne punishing the Graves, based upon what the Nocturne did, the Graves could have also punished him and denied him a whole bunch of stuff. Start to think like this, okay? Because when you start to think like that, you start to realize that a lot of your own in jungle div power, it comes from your ability to siphon it from the enemy. There's no such thing as a jungle div where everybody's happy. Yeah, knocked an ult. Flash burn, tether's still there. Ha ha ha, laugh, 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 death. Now he's gonna get the grubs, okay? So at least there will be a respawn of the grubs, that's good. Okay, so as I was saying, you're siphoning the power. Okay, there's a total amount of jungle power in the universe in a game. It's not infinite. There's a limit. And it's about how you share it. And jungle differs when you take his half, you take a lot of his half away from him and you remove that power. And now you have it all. That's what it means. All right. And if you view it that way, I guarantee you, as a platinum jungle, if you view it that way and start to think that way, it's going to change the way you jungle. Now, we're going back to base on a ward because I don't know why we're even in this bush. I don't know why this fight is happening. I understand there's a lot of fighting going on. I don't know why the Graves is thinking, oh, I can run in. I don't know why anyone's doing anything at this particular point. There's no reason for it. The Graves runs in thinking, ha, 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 instead of just... Why did he take one? Does anyone know this? Hold up a second. Oh, yeah, the Pantheon. So I'm having a fat chat to the camera, <laughs> obviously. The Pantheon moves down. 
and now it's contested. So we snack one away, that's great, right? But I feel like you could just stick to it. You got Garen coming back to w the lane, just stick to it. There's no reason to rotate to this. Like, Orianna's coming back to lane, Vlad's going back to base, if Vlad's basing, why even remotely go for it? I know the Twitch showing up is weird, but is it really? Yeah. Now that Nocturne's like, can I do the dragon finally? Oh my, like the obsession. The absolute obsession. Cuts across up here. 2,000 in pocket. Braze goes to the bottom lane here. I like that again. Oof, this waffling is high level waffling. That's a lot of waffling. I don't know if his genetic line created waffles way back when, but it's close. There's just no sequencing. There's no element of, hey, I'm jungling and farming. He's just running around. I mean, obviously, guys, it's a Vladimir. He's got W. It's not the person I would use my ult on. I would use it on the bottom lane. The virus has no flash. You've already burnt it. Repeat gank that sucker. Um, nice ult from the Graves there. We'll take that kill. Panther's getting some plates here, some juice. 63 CS to 58 in 11 minutes. Now, it's not horrific, but it's pretty bad. Should be a lot higher. And again, a lot of it comes from counter-jungling. Yeah, messy, messy, scrappy, pointless. Most of the time, all it took, we extrapolate a little bit of thought experiment here. Let's go through it. You full clear, kill the graves, take his red. You do this, you do this, you do this, yes? You can go back to base. Now you can do these to protect them from counter-jungling and then cut up for the grubs, or you can just go straight for the grubs yourself. Take all three, gank this lane, gank this lane as necessary, fall back, most likely the Platinum Graves is not going to be counter jungling you anyway, so you do a full sequence down, alt the bottom lane, get a kill, shove the wave up, you've got grubs, so use it to get some plates, or just now go do the dragon. If you can't do the dragon, push it up and do this, and then get in his jungle and take the respawn of the grump on the walls if he hasn't taken them. Most likely he's here anyway. Fight him, kill him because you have a lead. Then you take the dragon. Respawn. And now you can sequence bottom to top, sorry, top to bottom again, and up bottom lane again. Take some more plates. Reset. Go straight for the second grubs. Shove this one. You see where my mind goes with this. So it's better that I kind of hypothetically go through that with you because this was so scrappy. It's almost like, well, where does he change his game plan? So that's probably what the Nocturne could have done. He just chose not to focus on those things. I don't know what he focused on. <laughs> Graves now is doing a bit of a sequence himself. There's an RNG scuttle on the top side. We can take that up. Graves going back to base. Oriana hits the uh, plant. Now Garen's moving on down. Alt 34, silenced, Vlad showing up, Pantheon's not moving. I mean, you can chase him until Kingdom Come, but it's still a Garen, it's still a Vlad. Graves could be coming out of nowhere, you don't know. There's the Orion ultimate, but are you really killing anyone? Do we have kill threat just yet? We're behind. Really tragic. And the Graves, I'm okay with the Shadow, obviously, but now we can really get into the, the Nocturne's jungle. We can keep an eye on the kill for the Orianna, but uh, I think he's gone too far. Do not have your animation cancel ready to go, Graves. Use the wall. You got flash up. Whoa. Gross. All right, guys. Make sure you understand as a Graves main uh, how to actually auto cancel. How to actually... You can Q flash, by the way. Just so you know. You can Q flash. You don't have to flash Q. Uh, you can Q flash for quicker animation as well. Now, we do get two kills. Hilariously. I don't know how. But simply here. If you... I've made a combos uh, tips and trick video for Graves. I'm just going to link it below. I'm, I was going to slow down and spend 10 minutes on it, but I'm not going to do that because if you're not interested in Graves, we don't want to do that. I will leave a link to the Graves tips and tricks below. And you can understand what I mean with your animation cancel with your autos, with your Qs, with your EQs, with your Q flashes, with your flash Qs, and uh, how you can redirect those Qs in a way as well. So I'll leave that below. Okay, let's just do that. Because that was, you could have done that very, very easily. And then shoved in plates. That's my point. Mechanically, do the play, shove him plates, get him, knock him, follow through, you kill him again anyway. Take all of his red side camps, gank the bottom lane. I'm so fed now, yay. So Graves also has had this moment to counter gank, to deny. But also, look at this, like we killed the Nocturne. Okay, where did we kill the Nocturne? Here. All right, there's Zillion, but it's a dead Orianna, it's a dead Nocturne. Pantheon is definitely the coin flip. We see the Pantheon alt come through in the mid lane. Okay, that's the thing we're tracking here. Right, that sucks. That's rough. That's not so good. But I guarantee you the Graves is doing the same damn thing even if Zillion is bottom lane and Pantheon is top lane. What would you do 
if those things weren't true. Now, if you have time to take the grubs, do the grubs. If you have the herald up, do the herald, right? Otherwise, take his blue side. Take anything, even just a grumpy is great. Take the grump, maybe chill and gank this lane. But alternatively, if you did what I said, and Nocturne shows up and goes up, take his whole red side and kill the bottom lane. Jungle denial, take his camps away. So this play worked out in such a fashion that the Graves had to be safer. That the Graves had to fall back to his own camps. And I agree with that play, right? So we're all on board with that one. But in Planum, you still don't see enough of, hey, can I take away some camps so the, the Nocturne's dead? Like all of this should be gone and you can be ganking the bottom lane. You know, Zillion's not even here. It's only Twitch. So can we take this and shove and take this turret? Question mark. And uh, you never know. A lot of hypotheticals, but I think the hypotheticals are important when it comes to jungle theory and pathing because practically you're not seeing it. Go watch. I mean, no, that W is not a very good one. That's not a good W, no. Doctor has no ult though. Let's look at it from the red team's perspective. Versus is out of position. He is definitely dead. And now because we make this play slower and because we make this play delayed, they're able to rotate and compromise. And now we actually end up losing a lot. It always adds up together. I kind of like sneaking this out, though. Provided you can do it and not die. That's a very important thing. You have smite. Just kite it, smite it, and leave. If you can't, take what you can and go. Just don't die for the raptors. But I like it. I like a little bit of thievery here. So. We get some kills. One grub camp to two. Pretty pitiful. This is available, Nocturne's gonna go ahead and snag the baby up. We don't have a lot of jungle denial from either team's perspective, either jungler's perspective. Okay. We miss an opportunity to really do this while the Nocturne is dead, so he will die for it. Now we leave the base. And let's see what happens. I'm amazed after all of that obsession. Like here, I will push this. Like I'm pushing this with the Varus. I kill this with the Varus. And now we all go to dragon. There's no reason to go to dragon by yourself. Push this, take this, suck the map in, move on down, start the dragon up. Right? No questions. Now the turret's still up, you give that safety net. Why do you give them a free safety net? Now the waves push back into us. Nocturne can go ahead and do the Herald, maybe. This guy starts and doesn't finish objectives. A horrific amount. It's really not good. Graves is now out of position. A little bit of a Pengu. Nocturne goes mega deep. So this is a game of League of Legends. And, um... Yeah. That's about all I got for that sequence. It's just like people's brains turn off. You know? Oh, what can I do today? Can I do this? No, I can't. Oh, can I do this now? Can I not? Stop thinking like that. Have a plan. There's just no planning at all in this MMR range. It's still very emotional and, like, fighter-y and, and can I rotate to this and... You know, learn the 80% rule. Is there an 80% probability I can rotate to impact this fight? Is there an 80% probability I can do this objective without having to be pushed off of it? Use that as a metric, and you will get that wrong a lot in the beginning, but when you start to get it right and your assessment starts to get really good, that calculation in your subconscious will win you games. Oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to contest that Herald, so I'm just going to do these camp sequences all the way down, kick the bottom lane, shove this up, and counter jungle. While he does this, not knowing where you are, right? So it's, it's always about this... Fusion of things, if that makes sense. Oriana goes in, old combo, runs away. You know, lack of CC in this in this comp is definitely not so good for uh, for the red team. Pantheon is strong. Pantheon is very strong. There's Varus. Here he goes. He actually turned it. Good. You got smite. You got smite. You got smite as well. You can use smite to slow. There you go. No, no, we saw that. There's a Nocturne ult. Oh, he's using a topside, of course. <laughs> I saw in the map and then I was just like, oh, he's gonna roam in. But he actually just goes and kills his Garen. How's Garen level 11? And this far down, but like, look at how strong Nocturne is. As I said, as I said on the gameplay channel, Eclipse, good. Nice item on Hex, uh, with Hexplate. You know, it's not something I'd necessarily always... <laughs> no way. Not something I'd necessarily always go for, but... The fact that the Nocturne's only died once, as abysmal as his path thing has been, makes me happy. 
You know, at least there's a level of risk assessment that's that's good. Whereas the Graves just doesn't have that risk assessment at all. Is that a game-winning play, though? Herald? Hit it into the turret, get a shield. Plus, if you get a turret with it, you can jump into it again. Uh, she dies anyway. You've got the, um, the Mites also. Graves is spawning, so we should get out of here as quickly as possible. Don't die for this one. There you go. Just leave. Take the, the Scuttle Crab. Nice. Back to base. Red buff is up. It's global. Next dragon is coming up as well. Do we care? Not really. Alt is available. Going on to the graves. And now you are Nocturne. Now you are strong. Now you are a good shadow. Forcing the TP. We run away. Hey. So this guy, if he fixes his early game jungling, I think he's got a nice package. This has been a pretty solid uh, transition for him. 716. You know, you can't complain about that whatsoever. Yeah, good. Good, good. In the meantime, Lux dies. We got a global red buff for our whole team. Let's give that away. Dragon is available. Nah, this is a free dragon, so let's go take it. Juicy. And now we can set up a Baron and maybe make a pick for that. Vladimir is out of position. Panthen goes all the way in. Huge damage. Nocturne ultimate is up again. So we can do Raptors while shadowing. Although I would be here right now. would not be doing Raptors at all. Like, can we get in the fight here? Thank you so much. Hello, Graves. Now up two levels. We kill him. And now there's a Lux, which we can spell shield. And Fear Tether, yes, I like this. It's done. Flow. So the difference between gold and platinum, as you're seeing, is the ability to start to get flow moments. And that's what wins you games in the Zelo. But if you combine it with good jungle denial and good jungle pathing in the early game, that's what makes you emerald. And emeralds obviously have a lot of issues, which we will cover in the next complete coaching. But for now, that will get you emerald if you can kind of hammer home those points. Really, truly. I have a lot of examples because I've gotten a lot of, uh, in the coaching classes, in the private discord, we have had silvers, golds, bronzes, now we're platinum now, we've had platinum, zero emerald now, we've had emeralds, zero diamonds. And we work together on this every single week. So we notice this cross tendencies when they're in these ranks, you know, the guys who are not diamond are like, yeah, I remember when I was platinum, you know, this is what helped me. You know, I, I just wasn't doing this enough. And that's the point. There are tendencies that you see because you have to adapt to your MMR, right? You have to play. Why am I following this guy? You have to <laughs> you have to play according to what your MMR is like also. And certain tendencies will be more powerful in certain ELOs. But ultimately, to get to Diamond, to get to Master Tier, it's about being good at a fair chunk of them. Don't always have to be amazing at all of them, but you just have to be good at a fair chunk of them at a very high level. You know, some people are terrible at farming, pathing, at sequencing, at understanding, maximizing experience, but they're Master Plus. Why? Because their ganking and jungle denial is just exemplary. It's insanely good, you know? And they have a champion that matches that kind of uh, ideology. Now he's like, well, can I kill the Garen, level 13? Let me find out. Yeah, I'm a, it's early season. Go for the limit test. We hit the Fear Tether. He will, of course, spin to win. Another Fear Tether is available because, well, actually marks up in 45 seconds, but it is a Garen at the same time, yeah. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you. Objectively as a coach, yeah, don't do that. You join your team, push an end. As a limit tester, early season, let me see what the damage is on this build. I like this build though. For a snowballing build, I like it. Double lethality item, obviously go uh, Edge of Night instead of Axiom, uh, not Axiom, Edge of Night instead of Eclipse if you need to, but Axiom second is juiced. You can obviously uh, try a few other lethality items as you like, get a grudge, but Black Cleaver and Fighter is still good as well. It's just snowballing with damage right now is so powerful. That when you have this advantage, as you see, I think Eclipse is really, really strong. And this makes your ult up every two seconds. There you go. Well, that's a quick ult, but nice dodge. Sideways movement. You see that? Just end. Just end. Beautiful. So a huge example of both jungles, again, not punishing each other's mistakes, but not focusing on the jungle denial. A lot of waffling and running around and doing nothing. No purpose. Develop that purpose. Understand where the jungle diff ratio comes from. Apply it. And then get this mid-game flow like this Nocturne. And you'll be Emerald in no time. Now, typically on this channel, we cover a wide variety of, you know, game states and things that happen. On the other channels, I don't like the level 1 fiestas because it kind of determines what's going to happen in the game. But in non-Master Plus MMR ranges, as you can see, we have a meeting of randomness. And essentially, I'll tell you exactly what to do when you're in the situation as a jungler because this is happening way too damn much. Honestly, my games, other people's games in the private Discord, the public discord, all the discords, everyone is getting invaded or doing invades at a higher clip than they probably should. 
And in this particular case, this is not necessarily a invade, but it's a level one fiesta. And it's still going on. Our echo here is who we're following, already has one assist, stays out. Should you have stayed out here at this stage as the Echo? Once you decide to invade, and the enemy team also decides to invade, it's an emerald game, everyone here wants diamond, and you get something from it, leave. The Graves, on the other hand, has got nothing. He's okay, he's already where he needs to be, but the Echo is now very compromised in terms of going back to base and maybe either spending the gold you get from the first blood. Look, here we got an assist, we didn't get a first blood. But now we're going over to the top side quadrant because we see the Graves, we're like, aha, we can steal this. You know, that's a possibility as well. And we're just in time to go ahead and snag this blue up, but we don't have our W, which has missing HP, which we can use with the smite. In this case, you would have been better off probably just doing a raptor stud. Now, the reason I say this is because when you have this kind of randomness, it's not uncommon to see top laners as they go back to top lane, come and check and ward it up. It's just in this particular case, do we value stealing the blue in a one-time occurrence then going back to our quadrant and compromising our sequencing. What if the Graves were to just go over here afterwards? What if the Graves has impact here, but you're too busy trying to get level three over here? Now you can see this, and this is the most important thing. The Echo did the blue, does the Raptors, and now will do the red. Prototypically, you're not going to get level three from this. The only time you get level three from this is if you include the Wolves instead of the Raptors. Remember that. Two buffs plus Wolves gives you level three, but two buffs plus Raptors, eh unless you actually get kills and assists, does not. Which means, as we finish this up over here, here, come on, come on. He still doesn't, even with that assist there. Still doesn't. So now you're level two, no W, no smite for 17 seconds, going to Krugs. All because of shenanigans level one and a bad adaptation on your part to steal his blue. The Graves is gonna get to his blue, do the grump and be like, well, that sucks. But what can you do about the inevitable gank that's going to happen on the top lane here? Nothing. You'll be compromised. Unholy compromised. Now the Graves will maybe get something here, go back to base, go down to the bottom side. You'll be down on the bottom side as well, but you won't really have any control because you focused too much on stealing his blue. Because you didn't have your W, it would have been better just to do your Raptors. And overall, just don't do this stuff level one, guys. Watch your entrances. The reason you're seeing more invades is because of this open map. You're seeing this? This open map here? This is what we're concerned about. We don't want to be in a position where we're allowing Graves, Jarvins, Nocturnes, Malveths, Shakos, Kindreds, and things like this to run at us in an open field when we're compromised. We are now compromised. Now, this game, we're now on the red side of the map, on doing the red side quadrant. But in another game, you might be on the blue side. Well, this is still the red side of the map, but you might be in your blue buff area, and it doesn't matter where, right? It doesn't matter where you might be. And if you are compromisable, why are we... Look at him. Why? You have to ask yourself at this stage. You absolutely must head over to vukai.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource, as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q and A's and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals, as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vukai.gg. I got 612 on pocket. I can easily just go back to base, grab a dark seal, get some control woods, go to the bottom side, try to do something bottom lane. I know sums were burned from the pike. Obviously, we can see the Draven still has his sums. Keep track of that, ping it out in chat, uh, time it, everything when you have level one shenanigans. But I had this in a coaching session earlier today as well with someone who wants to be Emerald. He just peaked Platinum 1. And I said to him in a very similar scenario, why didn't you just go back to base after Krugs? It was later in the game, but why didn't you go back to base? He was like, well, can I just walk to the bottom side quadrant? You could, but now you've got Raptors Krug sequencing, right, up, and you're going to walk all the way across to do Wolves Grump down. Now you've got the worst possible thing, where you're going to have a Krug camp spawn, right, and a Wolf camp spawn, and there's no connection between the two. And you really don't want that. But also, you know Graves is on top side. Go back to base, get an item advantage. Go all the way down here. You've got this blue side quadrant. You're going to control this bottom scuttle. And you've got a lane that you can potentially gank. That's noble, which I would like to do. And it's better and easier to do that when you have some sort of itemization advantage versus having nada, which is what he has in this case. So, Graves obviously realizes his blue's gone. If you watch this channel and any content, you know my reaction to that is, oh, well, that sucks. 
So anyway, I carried on jungling, because what else are you going to do? You're not going to get it back. Now the Graves can't do the, the route through the wall. That was built pretty solid. Uh, as we see the Urko here, there's a potential dive that's possible, but like, well, you know. What do you think he did? Excuse me. <laughs> what do you think he did? Graves. Like, very clearly, even if he did red side quadrant into your blue, he's not here anymore. Since when would he have done his blue side, stolen your blue, and gone back to the, the, the red side over here? It's literally impossible. Because we saw him at 115 go up. He had to have done this, done this, and pieced out. If you think that's what happened, it's not what happened. Because by the time he's finished his red side quadrant with a Q stud and gone to your blue, you might even run into him. Your blue was gone a long time ago. So there's no reason for you to think that he's still on the side. But that's also why is an Echo being compromised sucks. Or any jungler, right? Being compromised at level 2 there in Krugs. What if the Graves had vision and saw this and decided to cut up after the red side quadrant and just invade you on Krugs and you're level 2 with no smite? You're doomed, right? You're doomed. And this is the kind of shit we're trying to avoid. So when you have these level 1 environments, these level 1 chaos zones, uh, just be a little bit wary about your adaptive pathing and things like that. And... Don't put yourself in a position to be made undone by Graves, Shinshaos, and meta junglers. Oh, Shinshao. Very evil jungler at the moment, yeah. Nothing's as broken as Brand in this patch. I'm sure it'll be hot fixed at some point when you guys watch this. But yeah, when you're an Emerald player, you have a bit of an ego. No offense. Maybe you don't. If you don't, then you'll be Diamond. But just understand that there's nothing about the MMR range that's holding you back. Nothing. Um... You know, why was this not a gank and blind for us? You know, like this kind of stuff, right? Like, why couldn't we try and abuse the pike? Why couldn't we try and abuse the draven? Why could like his flash now? Okay, everything's up. Ignore the frames. It's just a replay glitch. Everything is up, but you got a Tom Kench with an Echo W layered onto each other. That's a guaranteed cleanse flash. And if he doesn't, it's a guaranteed kill. Ignore anything else right now. I know you're looking at this. I know you're looking at the Cinevia as a free kill. I know you're looking at the graves. But basically, you as the Echo know full well this guy's sequenced up. You ping it, you ping it, you ping it, you say, Gallo, please hover down. I have shit to do in the bottom lane. End of story. But shadowing this is not necessarily wrong. But at the same time, I don't even think we should be on the scuttle crap right now. I think we've got full control over this. I think you should be going straight for the Draven. So as a total Emerald focus, as this is meant to be a complete coaching for Emerald jungling, if you have level 1 nonsense, which I guess a lot of you are having, this is how we would play it. However, if you had a regular game where you just get leashed, you do boof, 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 boof. It's 4 minutes 03. You know, let's just assume you've done a full clear, you've done the scuttle. You're in a similar situation. You should still be able to gank this lane at 3 minutes 34 minutes. Uh, yeah, but in that range for the same results. So nothing changes, okay? Nothing changes. And from the Graves' point of view, you're tracking. Imagine if you didn't track where the echo began because you went leashless and you got a wandering adventure here. You'd be in the same situation. So he's getting baited. Oh, he's not getting baited. He's getting gifted a free kill because the Galio was like, let's actually see what he did. You have all the power in the world and you choose to do that. Nivea's strong. Echo now holds. Goes to the top side. Telegraphs everything. Graves knows he can go to the bottom side quadrant, do everything. Echo knows now, hey, grubs are up, but I haven't based. Graves knows, hey, my quadrant's under control, I can go back to base and I can contest the Grubs. Now Echo's gonna do his Krugs, not Grubs, and go back to base. Finally buy, ooh, he's gonna stay out even longer. This is gold, Evelyn. Uh, this is gold, uh, a gold Evelyn. Golden Mumu on this channel, Golden Mumu, the Golden Mumu. Stayed out with 7,000 gold. Graves doesn't even go for it. Guy, you saw an Echo not buy, go topside. Which means you know we started there, because you have the timers now. You know he's going to do that shit and go back to base. You know you've done this shit and you're going back to base, but you know you have itemization and a dirk. Why aren't we going straight to it? Why aren't we saying, hey, Echo, I want to fight you? Because if you stayed after doing Raptors and Krugs, we're going to fight on this thing and I'm going to win because I have item advantage. As an Emerald Jungler, you've got to start to have that real... Not... You see, that's where the ego comes from. But not ego, but just that real strong map control. See, now, I literally, against the Graves, last night, with one of my off-meta picks... Got five grubs to one. And he destroys me 1v1. You know why? Because he played like the Echo. And he played like this Graves. He fell back to this quadrant early without a reset. Went back to base. I was the Graves. 
ironically, in a very identical situation. You know what I did? I left base, I just did them immediately. I knew that the Echo, in this case, had to go back to base. It was a Graves against me, but it's an Echo against this guy. Therefore, I have free grubs. I'm going to take them quickly while I have their free real estate, just in case he decides to contest. By the time he contests, they're gone. Fall back to my blue side quadrant, sequence down. I can counter gank him if he chooses. Or if he decides to shove top lane for whatever reason, I can kind of do a dragon, I can kind of counter juggle, I can kind of dive, etc., etc., etc. Exactly the same scenario happened to me yesterday. But I didn't do my blue side quadrant before the grubs. I took them first. Because now I have a logical flow afterwards to dominate the game. Whereas this Graves now, it's a bit, it's a bit janky and weird. It's what the Echo does with this information. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, doesn't even step into the W for shield. Okay, but well, we do get the flash kill. We'll take it. Okay, W. Okay. Well, we witnessed some things here today. And uh, it's been very interesting, to say the least. Whew, close. But yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? Now the Graves has Time Risen can counter jungle. And the Echo has given him this control, the control he shouldn't have at all. And yet, I feel like the Graves also doesn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, the Echo's definitely compromised, but he's compromised himself. The Invade and the level 1 fighting ruined any sort of flow he had to this game. And even though he did come out all right, he didn't take control of the situations he could have. And now, because his back timer was off, he's going to lose everything here. Graves shows up, obviously, we get our Krugs. But the Graves hasn't really fully abused the Grub Snack, you know? Like, the counter jungling here is good. But in my mind, it's more about the counter jungling and the counter ganking here. Because if he did what I said and he saw the Echo here, guess who's cutting through and counter ganking? Graves. Guess who gets a double kill? Graves. Guess who now gets to shove up, take plates, take a dragon, and because he killed the Echo, potentially either counter jungle here and kill Echo again, or if Echo goes to the top side, get free stuff and kill bottom lane again. You know, or just fall back to your camps and then counter gank the Echo if he does come down again. Like, it just sits, it slots him perfectly. The Graves are the perfect, even though he randomly did this nonsense counter jungling early, he got a nice gank off, he took this quadrant for the second time, he went back to base, he had all the tempo in the world because he saw the Echo go up here with no buy. He, Free grubs, free sequence down, free counter gank, free counter jungling, free dragon, free second grubs. You know, again, it's 6 to 0 plus a dragon, it's GG. Honestly, it's GG. However, because we're an emerald, and he didn't do those things, the enemy jungler didn't really make use of that, and that's the problem. See, the Echo didn't get punished in the way that the Echo should have been punished, and thus the Echo is still in the game, and still is 1-0-1, one, one, and still able to kind of do a few things. Thing is, though, Graves is now 2 0, zero. And even though Echo's 1-0-0, zero, zero, we're down 500 gold. We see this fight here. Tomcat is very strong, by the way. But, you know, it's Pike, so he deserves all the pain in the world. Uh, that hook does miss. Echo W is tragically... Oh, okay. It, it looked kind of shitty. And then uh, Tom Kench. So, cool. Nice rotation. We take that gank. Now we're going deep. Okay. And at this point, we don't know where the Graves is. Perfect, oh, man. You... Like, this is... A, but you don't know that Graves is going to... Like, you have no idea that Graves is going to top lane. You have no clue as an Echo. And you don't know. And the guy's going to come out of base for some reason with Umbral Glaive. But, like, he's going to come out with huge atomization spikes. So I'm more interested in just securing the Scuttle Crab. You know, if I can take his red, I'll take it. But, you know, I might look a little bit with plants to see what I can do. You know, I'm not looking to be too aggressive where I'm only getting Krugs and things like this. But we rotate to the mid lane, Pike rotates to the mid lane, that W does miss, that one was not good. Uh, Graves shows up out of base, or not out of base, off the top side. And now we're in the middle of nowhere getting eviscerated. You know, like, is this worth Krugs? Like, you got to gank off. I don't know if Graves is coming down. Why did I do my Scuttle Crab, mine, take my blue quadrant, and then I'll loop back based upon what Graves does so I can position myself to either capitalize on a dragon if he goes top side, Counter gank him if he shows mid or bottom lane. Like, give myself a bit of uh, distance, you know? Like, just take some space away from the relationship. Two jungles need some space apart. Let me see what you're doing. Then we can reconnect later on and we'll have a good old-fashioned fist fight. But it's just like... Ray's goes topside almost for no reason, though. Like, you know Echo's down here. Why do you go topside, you know? Look at this. Guy does all of this shit. And he knows that the Echo hasn't taken his camps. Now we see the Echo here. Immediately, in my mind, I'm thinking... Well, if he kills a pike, he might go straight for the dragon. 
Yeah, Elio's got ultimate as well. You know, my, my red side camps might be taken. And because the Echo's Path thing was terrible, the Draven shows up to help him out, right? Over here. Da -da -da. Terrible path thing. Pull it out, don't get spotted. Uh, also, just go for the red if you're going to go for the red. Like, why is he even going up? See, this is Emerald problems. You're noticing that the sequencing directions, the quadra controls, the back time is, and where you go, it's all better than Platinum and below, but it's still significantly far away from Diamond. You cannot blame the MMR for these decisions. This is on you guys, right? So think about that as an Emerald jungler. And consistently replicating that gets you to Diamond. And making that accuracy of decision making spot on gets you to Master Tier. And that's the problem here. See, now we're forced into this rotational game, but again, 80% rule. Do I have 80% chance of killing the Pike or the Anivia, you know, before Graves rotates? Probably not, therefore I'm not going to rotate. What do you do instead? You just hold the waves. Hold the waves, deny the plates, look back your blue side, and assess. And we didn't do that. And thus Graves gets a free Dragon. Good for him. Good for him. Not good for the Echo, though. Now Graves does Raptors, goes mid lane and holds that one here. The Pike's going to be rotating to the Galio again. Echo now does blue, walks into the river. Why? We've done one buff. Why are we even bothering with this? There's no reason to bother with this at all. You've lost control, my friend. You've lost complete control of this game. He's gone to the bottom side to do his blue Gromp Wolves. What would you think about doing here? I'm sure most of you have verbalized it or internalized it. What do you think about? Yeah, you know? Two camps, plus some grubs that I think I can fight over because I got Rocket Belt. Not a huge fan of that thing. You should just go Storm Surge. Oh, at least, you know. Phew. Echo, Echo's a little fringe here. You got the Lich Bane, the Nash's Tooth. You got the Rocket Belt in there second and third. You know, you got the Storm Surge as well. We're still waiting for a lot of champions to get like a dedicated core build path. The main channel will deal with that when that time comes. But regardless, you have an itemization spike, right? It's fine. It's solid. It's okay. I still think Storm Surge is, is better to go, but, you know. Now we've gone to the bottom side to take blue, to cut up to this, and the, the Graves isn't thinking about the Grubs. The Graves is just going to the bottom side, he's not thinking about objective domination. The Nivea is like, I really want these. Should you obsess over objectives that are, like, like, should you die for these? No. But at the same time, it's objective control. Like, the Graves didn't even go up, like, okay, the next thing I expect the Echo to do after death is to go top side because the Grubs will be there. Therefore, I will collapse with my team, kill him, take all the Grubs, all six. Then we can go to the mid lane and shove it out. And if bottom lane's Genki block, translate that to a gank, and now I can live in his jungle. Now we can push his turret down. And you can start to elevate the game state quite nicely. And instead, he's gone to the bottom lane here. Devin gets a kill. There we go. Tom Kench. Pistol Voyage. And Echo gets three grubs. And I don't think guy who leaves the base and goes blue, uh, wrapped his grubs, should get away with it. There's the bottom side, might as well do this. Obviously, track the Trundle. Uh, Alright then, Trundle is not interested. I'm seeing this a lot though. People are figuring out the items and like staying in base a lot longer thinking about the items. See? Now we lose our Krugs. Grace is still there, so we could do more, but we don't know where Trundle is. So, yeah, there you go. Obviously, the freeze here is huge. Forces this. So, goodbye, Darius. Goodbye, Darius. Because Trundle has no choice, right? No passive on Anivia still. This is something we could do. Obviously, you have to pay attention to the Pike Rooms. Uh, there's an Anivia passive coming back up, but that's a lot of damage. Galio plus Echo. And uh, Graves. Here it is. The Q against the Anivia wall. Did you see that? That's what I'm showing you. The Q against the Anivia wall. He gets an extra bounce on the... There you go. Watch this. See the little short change on the back of that Anivia wall? Gets double proc damage, beautifully done. Kills the Galio. Echoes forced to ult. Pike is rotating again. And. Turns back in and uses passive proc. Runs away, goes back in. Has no smite. Graves has smite. Doesn't use it, gets it anyway. Now the Omega fisting each other. Darius is chasing the Anivia. The fact that the Graves has done this rotational thing multiple times this game is huge, right? He looks at it, he sees it, he moves, he cuts off, he actually makes shit happen. It's, it's really nice to see. But the Echo really hasn't been thinking about the Graves as much, and the Echo, sorry, the Echo hasn't been thinking about the Graves as much, but the Graves has been thinking about the Echo, albeit incorrectly. But I will take a guy that's right four times out of ten, than a guy that's zero out of ten because he wasn't even taking the test. He was absent. 
So be a lot more like the Grace when you think about this kind of stuff versus just ignoring it like the Echo. And you know, the Echo Soul bottom line, it took the blue. Yeah, the Echo Soul start red and he took the blue again, but like you taking one blue level one and then taking another blue later on, it, that doesn't compromise or win a game, you know what I mean? Full quadrant counter jungling, stealing objectives under a guy's nose, you know, cutting off with a counter gank like the Graves has done a few times. That's where you want that impact. So the, the Echo is 2 1 1, but he is down 700 gold now, and his jungling has not been so good. Graves is out of base, and maybe it will just avoid that, that Echo W, get the stun off here. Is a lot of damage though. There you go. That's fine. We'll take it. Here's Pike in the zone. Graves is showing up. Tom Ken shows up as well. Darius is top lane. Echo's going to go in onto the Pike here. He is forced to ult out just in case Pike ults him. I don't necessarily think he would have, but uh, you know. Caution is better than not having caution. Pike is eaten alive. Taunted. And killed. Don't feel bad for him. Draven gets to shove this down here. In the meantime, while this is happening, the uh, Graves is going on the Galio here. He is strong enough to kill most people at this stage. Uh, obviously, it's a full grab to do... I don't even want to understand that. I'm not even going to pretend to think I'm understanding what's going on there. But even with two grubs, you see they're able to rinse this turret with a trundle. And sure, they're getting kills here, which is great. But, uh, you know, the Galio's dead and there's a dragon on the map. And I think Graves will have to give this up just purely because they've got numbers. Yeah, okay. So at this point of the game, at this point of the game, when you're doing these objectives and you're pushing waves and you're using the grubs and the heralds and the dragons... Not a lot has changed into general macro, but what you will notice, my friends in Emerald, is that the grubs will make a big difference around 15 to 20 minutes, okay? One death against a five or six grub team, even four grubs, can mean an open inhib for you. And if you're not controlling the Herald and the Dragons and everything else, while the snowballing component of the game is down earlier, it's, it catches up later on. So before we'd have an eight minute, 10 minute Herald, right? And that would do a lot of stuff. That could take a top turret, open the game up already. Snowball does this. Now that that doesn't happen, but it's almost like that period of time has just been placed later and it's not replacing it, it's just placed on top of. So 15 to 20 can go a lot, lot quicker when you make a mistake due to the nature of the grubs. And maybe if they have heralds, if they have mites, uh, you know, you're behind in gold anyway. And I've seen this a few times. You saw this on the main channel video. The Shin Shao was at a very quiet moment against uh, the, the hack room. They got one pick, and with six grubs, doof, 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 literally, and one push at like 16 minutes. And now what if you don't have wave clear? Now what if you're super far behind? That's where that snowball catches up, right? So it's just delayed. Be wary of that. Because look at the trundle already. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can see it happening. Uh, the Anivia is also going here. Like, the map is starting to move quickly. So the 15 to 20 minute mark is really where things start to happen. And now, obviously, Galio is doing things. Um... He's going to, you know, try and get up the... He's farming, and he's looking to make plays. He's looking to use his lead. It's 5-0-3 now. Echo's 2 on 5 Sure, he's got some assists, but he's really not impressed upon any of us, any sort of, like, power level jungling. Now, it's a 2v1 on the Herald. He's just going to go for it. Don't know why he would. Waiting for the team. There we go. That's better. But, as you know... I'm not a fan of randomly contesting objectives and dying for it in a game that's, you know, kind of equal. Um, Darius is finally showing up. Galio is finally showing up. But uh, I'm more of the mind, like, I'd like to push this, like, okay, they're on Herald. Push the wave. Use your full grubs. Take the turret. You know, move down here. Take all of this. Push this out. Take this one as well. There's no Baron. They're going to take the Herald and base. You can probably get two turrets, a whole bottom side quadrant, ward it up, and set yourself up for the next dragon. Maybe you win that fight because you've got the vision advantage, you make a pick, and then you can bear it. So that's what you th should think about as an Echo in this situation, not trying to contest a Herald. The Herald is not that great. Most of the time it glitches, and it's great if you have might and you're just looking to end the game and push, but in a, in a neutral game, there's no real reason for you to do this. Darius goes mega deep, Echo's Ws have not been that great this game, a few have hit, but overall it's not that good. Um, we are stunned there by the Nivea Force to flash out. We have the Draven kiting back here. Ignite is killing him. Dra <laughs> Darius is running away. Graves obviously died in the fight. And here you go. Trundle with the buffs and uh, two grubs. See what I'm saying? So while grubs are not that massive, imagine if they had six. 
Imagine if they have a split push with six and your positioning is completely off all the time. Huge, yeah? Absolutely huge. Really, really, really adds up. And when it comes to being an emerald and dealing with split push, a lot of that is, is not allowing the game to get to this point, as always, you know, cliche advice. But it's also about how you rotate to fights when people are out of position. And the Echo hasn't done that. The Graves did, the Echo hasn't. Now the Echo's in a 3v2 here, the Pike goes for the kill, we get to send the Pike, that's fine, we're gonna get that auto, auto attack. Uh, Q plus passive proc, we're gonna ult out, we're gonna run away, and we get a freebie. Darius is now chasing the Anivia. Now the Herald is being used, and this is a free inhib. See, the Herald is strong here. Because we've got two grubs, we've got an inhib. Jump inside, okay. Alright, see what I'm saying? Bye-bye. They really need to fix it and make it more intuitive. In the meantime, Trundle is splitting on the top side. All of these fights are ongoing, but the Trundle is just splitting using two grubs to smash through bases. And as a jungler, you're like, well, it's Emerald, I'm 418, I should have some sort of... You have no power. You have no power as Echo in this game. And unfortunately, what this does is gives the dragon to the graves. Alright. Nothing happens for a little bit. Everyone stalls out. Remember, two inhibs being down here is really good for the red team to scale. They have a Senna. They can scale nicely. They have an Echo. This is always very good for them. There we go. There should be a dead Raven. Don't have to ult, but cool, we'll do it. Meanwhile, Trundle's doing this. Now, Galio and everyone full commits, and out of position is the Echo, who dies. Trundle walks on over, has TP as well if he needed it. Echo just missed position. If you can count to five, you will win and climb to Diamond. I mean, climb to Challenger with it, honestly. Hey, do we have more numbers than the enemy team, yay or nay? And the only time you would ever compromise that is if you're like 20 kill bomber, you total 1v9 and you know you mechanically can do that, but very few people actually have that skill. And because of this death and this random reposition, we die. Like we had a good ability here to decompress the map and just fall back to camps, push out some waves, farm some supers. You know, they didn't have the numbers to go to the Baron. We could easily contest it. We just had to control the map a little bit, do it again, do it again, and win the game. But everyone's always impatient. And I'll, I will be honest, it's kind of tough for us Anivia. Um, kind of confused as to why we're fighting. Do we want to be fighting here? No. Talked about this in the coaching classes uh, last week. So obviously in the private Discord, if you want some of that stuff, good juice. And basically now, it's a grubbed up, barroned up, two dragoned up, blue team, who are like this, versus the Tomcats, the Echo, you know... And the Galio, who are just detached from how the game needs to be played, and they just like get absolutely steamrolled in the base here. And you're gonna say, what do you do in the situation as Red Team? Again, solve the actual disease, not the presenting symptoms, okay? Right, a cough could mean many, many things, but if you don't know what disease it belongs to, you can't cure it. And a lot of the time, when maps are like this in your games, it's not only because you made mistakes early, we always do that, but it's because the moments you could have used to actually come back or to stall out, you didn't. Like, all of these fights where they died were pointless. What you want to do is just control your camps, have deep vision, be very, very patient, wait for that numbers advantage. If Trundle split pushes without his team, which he will, kill him. Now you have numbers advantage. If he does it again, kill him. Sure, you might lose a dragon. Sure, you might lose a herald. You might even lose a baron. But if you consistently have numbers advantage and can keep feeding on those ways and pushing out the camps, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to end up in this situation, right? And then from that, 12.9k gold in the Echo, 15.3 in the Graves. Graves played much better. Wasn't perfect, but it was much better. His mind was in the right place. He just needs to work in execution. The Echo had both problems. So, hopefully that does help a little bit. It is very difficult to kind of always condense these things as much as possible in a short time frame, but... There you go, Emerald Jungling is chaotic, but it's still on you, the jungler, to control the games, especially when you're playing a meta jungler. Okay, so what the hell is going on in Diamond MMR in Season 14? Well, as always, people are doing this. And if you're the Vi, you're like, well, can't I just watch the entrances? Why are my team running it down basically in the bottom side? So, 
you should hopefully resonate with what we're witnessing over here where the enemy Warwick is now going to get some freebies for his team. And uh, he has actually already died, just to point that out. I didn't want to show it here. He had face checked and, and, and died. So, you know, that's a TFT challenger thing. <laughs> this is a Diamond MMR, Diamond MMR game. But yeah, I don't really understand why any of this is happening. So if, as a Vi, as a Vi in the situation, what do you think about in Diamond, right? Uh, you want Master Tier, you're against the Warwick, which is basically in your mind a free win because this is not a champion that juggles well at all. I mean, it, it's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. But the Tristan is 1 0 1. However, she hasn't based yet. You've got the newcomer midline. So the newcomer midline with the buffs is pretty damn good, but she's not going to be enough to stop a Tristana, a Yasuo, or whatever getting a two level lead. And I know because I had a Yasuo get a two level lead on my Karma, and I thought it was doomed. Turns out, it wasn't doomed, because we just had to wait a little bit for that mid-game spike. I just got the grubs, I controlled the dragon or two, and we just won a few fights and we won. And that's the thing about diamond games, is people often think, you know, like in emerald and gold and platinum and gold uh, and silver, whatever, right? They talk about, how do I win? How do I win those late games, right? Those team fights. How do I win at 33 when my team are caught out and I'm not with them? Or, you know, like we try to fight and we lose. In diamond, you should, at this point, realize that if you want Master Tier quickly, you know what the best way to do it is? Win at 20 to 25. And I mean that in a very serious, non-repetitive, boring, like, just win at 25. I mean, like, literally, stop jerking it around and figure out how to win by 25. Seriously. End of story. Stop letting games go to 30. Stop letting them go beyond. Hit the turrets when you've got grubs. Take the grubs and get the turrets. If you don't get any grubs, hit the turrets anyway. Look for ways to consistently push the map forward, no matter what. Right? If you're playing a Camille, if you're playing anything like that, you have to realize that you being in that situation is the closest way to win. Now, Warwick has done a three camp into the red, into the raptors. There are obviously uh, some trackings of the vibe being on the bottom side, just through extrapolation. Obviously, here we got, uh, you know, understanding whether it was leashed or not. And even then, it's kind of obvious if you have good early game vision. So in Diamond, you should understand how to track where people go. Tristana goes back to base, comes back to lane, uses a double longsword Doran's Blade combo to go in onto the Karma, who's not greeted this out. And you're saying, well, what could I have done as Vi in this particular situation? And that's where things get really interesting, right? Really, really interesting. Here, you look at this. Why are you on red? You're flash. So it has nothing. Why are you on flash? You know what I mean? Like, this is like, oh, she actually has everything here. I get trolled by the frames again. She has stuff, but it doesn't really matter. I think we can surprise her quite nicely. The difference between good junglers and bad junglers is, do I really need to full clear here? Or is there a way for me to punish this Tristana before she goes back to base? Now, I'm not necessarily saying in this particular case it's always going to be that way. But a good diamond jungle are those that cut a camp, a cut a clear short just to make an impact. They get fed, the enemy jungler gets denied, the laner gets denied, and a certain spike is prevented. Now, the Tristana currently has in pocket 685, right? The Karma has 318. That's due to the kill and assist plus the kill. So they're both looking at a little bit of a good... They're in a good situation because the karma is actually spent, as you see here, right? She's spent. So we have an advantage currently over the Tristana, and we are... And we are. We are faster than the Warwick as well at clearing, right? So can we use some of this pressure in the lane? Now, as we watch this, karma hits the Q, all right? What's stopping a Vi from walking into the lane right here? Because look at Fog of War is, just so you know. The... Laner has sacked down, so the Fog of War is straight to the bush. This laner has sacked to the side, so the Fog of War is all the way to the bush. But the minions without the laner is actually, as you can see, more on the edge. So you can actually slide in where the mouse is a little bit without being seen. So walking up out of the brush, if the Tristan is obviously to the top side, like this is a hypothetical. And then you can hold your Q and charge it up nicely. In this case, obviously, she's in the bottom of the bush. So you walk through the side, you walk up, you start to charge your Q. You know she's probably got some plus a plus a rocket jump here. Here we go. It's a 22 second cooldown at this stage. Nice. <laughs> can we do something? You know, can you try and time your flash Q with her rocket jump? Can you force her flash just by pressing Q? Because if you can force her flash right now, right, right now, you force it with your Q. Perfect. Perfect. You're compromising her a little bit. Now the 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 karma actually goes in here and hits the chains. So if you ping and the karma sees you and she does the exact same thing here, she's rooted now. You can 100% hit a flash Q and kill her, 
right? 100%. And even if it's that close, it's worth the invest. You're just like, this is a flash queue. We should kill. I mean, look at this. 9, 211 HP. You know, you got a flash queue and do a max range charge there of uh, 109 damage, hopefully. You got an auto cancel on your E. That's another 200. Uh, maybe an auto attack cancel gives you a, a, a nice extra juice. Karma's there to do damage as well. I think you can probably kill her here. Like, you should. So, understand that there's a lot of fiesta going on. And Tristana got fed from it. So, can I leverage that against him tomorrow? Right here, boom. But what about my red and my crux? Who cares, man? Who gives a shit? Because the war goes down here. Sequencing up. And he's going to be full clearing like, a, like an emerald or diamond stuck for life. And now the flash goes through, but the flash doesn't go through because she dead if you hit the flash queue. So, Olaf goes on a journey, figures out that, hey, the Vi is not there. That's what top laners do nowadays. And the Tristana is going to go back to base. Now, obviously, if you hear what you can do is help the Karma shove so she can go back to base. And she still has her TP to use, right? Huge. Now the karma's stuck pushing this out. Tristana's gonna TP back in, all in her, and maybe kill her. Let's observe. Da 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 do. Woo! Close. How many times has your top laner died in, uh, sorry, has your mid laner or top laner died in this scenario because you didn't do this? Add it up. Rise on the bottom side doing the scuttle crab. Seven's a Warwick who's now gonna be walking to the top side. There's a Garen going on the, on the Olaf. This guy stays to finish his wolf, his, his scuttle crab first. Look at this. Bro. Ditch the crab, man. Go. Off you go, doggy. Like, why are we finishing the scuttle in this particular situation? Like, I know why he wants to... Okay, okay. We, okay. We, well, we have smite. We, we, we have smite. Okay, sure. But, like... Fine. Fine. I'll, I'll concede this one. We technically have smite. But at the same time, it's more about... I see too many people with full HP scuttle swap 100. So, fine. I'll concede that you might as well auto-attack smite that one. But at the same time, you know, if it's at 900 HP, please don't. Because if it was 900 HP, there's a possibility that your Olaf dies. This is just... And that's why I'm like, okay, well, like, it was 600. He smited it. It's kind of close. You know, and he still gets there in time. But still, it's an auto-attack. It's a smite. And it almost cost Olaf's life. So this is like the fringe where it's like, is this acceptable to finish the, the scuttle or should I leave? Because you've got to have your F keys on the situation, right? You also have to have your F keys on this situation too. Like you could have gone here as well as Warwick, which is most likely where he was looking to go. So you understand what I'm saying as a diamond player of Leon. If you want my Satya, you are. Vi, in the meantime, takes her bottom side scuttle here. We observe the fact that the Vade is now 1-2-0. There is Emilio. There's your flash key auto attack. E, well, how difficult was that? I mean, that's still a good take. Now, the works on the top side, so you know that in about 20 seconds, you're going to have uh, that beautiful grub spawn, which means you probably should have saved your warding totem that you have right now and placed it here so we can track where the work go next, uh, goes next. Let's see what we learn from the scenario. Work goes back to base. Full clear scuttle gank is juicy. Don't know why you're looking for your blue. And Warwick goes down here. So now we see him. What does he do afterwards? Have a look. Obviously, this is warded. He hits that plant, so we see it. And does anyone pay attention to it? Nope. Bottom lane does. His bottom lane actually pays attention to it. Warwick walks up to a Draven Morgana, which is like the stupidest thing you can ever do in this particular situation. And uh, Vi gets free grubs for it. I don't have anything else to say about that, other than you're Warwick and you're running out of Draven Morgana with Emilio Vane, who are losing, while Vi takes grub. You can't. You can't do it, sir. Unless they troll you somehow. Remember, uh, Morgana's W scales with missing HP as well, so that's huge if the lower you are. Like, what is the work hoping to achieve here? Now, Tristana's gonna move on down. Looks like they will get kills anyway. Uh, that is the way it is. But, from Vi's perspective here, you're watching this as you do grubs. There we go. Like, you could rotate to this as... You know, part of you that's like, you know, maybe I should rotate down, walk all the way through. Yeah, I'm sure you could. You could. But I do like just taking the camps away as well. But, you know, like the, the Warwick brute forced this stupid ass gank. And, you know, while there was a ward anyway and they saw it disengaged, I just find having this ward a little sooner allows lanes to kind of play around it better. So it's just, it's a minor thing. I don't think it necessarily changes your reality in this situation, but I do think it's something we're thinking about it. We got all three grubs. So now we are level six with the counter jugglers and RG Scout on the top side. We have a level six Olaf out of position. So what are we going to do? Say hello, Olaf. How do you do? And the warrior gets a dragon. Baron's like, can I still kill people? Yes. Now, there you go. Yes is the response. Olaf gets pushed off of the top scuttle. Karma gets a lot of alone time in the mid lane. And now what? Right? Now what for the warrior? Now what for the Vi? So the Tristana's lead for me is largely because of our problem. 
with how we played that early game. Now, yes, Karma got a kill there as well. She's 2 0 0. We didn't talk about it. But it is coin flip, right? When your teams do those good things and they get away with it without your interaction, it is a coin flip. So now Vi's going to go topside here. And I'm like, why are you going topside to a level 6 Olaf when you know Warwick's going to reset and have no camps up here, right? It's better. There's no. Okay. Let's hold the hold up a second. Just watch this play out for a little, little, a little bit. Uh, there we go. Ult. I don't think it's necessarily going to matter. Karma's showing up. We're dead to Tristana. That's a beautiful Karma queue. Ignite. We'll get one. <gasps> it not get nobody. Oh, wow. Well, that sucks. So, as I angrily press, press backspace for a reason. You know, Warwick goes bottom lane. No, he does it with a Grump because you can add the CS together, right? So, the guy does a, a five camper. All right. And he does a scuttle crap, and he gets top lane. That's 24 CS. And he goes back to base, he comes down here, he takes a grump, right? So that'll be 28, juicy. Goes down here, does all the shenanigans, all the floating, all the nonsense, takes a dragon. That counts as 4 CS. That's 32. Now he's going to go ahead into the wolves, right? And that'll be 36, which is, of course, what's he, what he's at. Now he's going to go to the top side, realize there's no camps up, he's going to rotate over. So you know this, right? When he shows bottom line, he's got 32, the grump's down, you know he's going to do the dragon. Afterwards, he has to go back to his wolf camp. The grump will, in theory, respawn at level 6. Two minutes, 15 after he takes that level uh, level 4-1. So, if you know the guy's going to be topside, all you got to do is say, Garen, stop, chill, Warwick's topside. That's it. Take your blue side camps here and consider, an, a, a, you know, potentially basing with a bit of gold or cutting in and ganking mid lane a little bit maybe, right? Trying to get ahead of a bit or just keep sequencing down and snowball your Draven a little bit. Uh, you've got a few decisions to make, but I don't like doing the blue and going top lane to use the Olaf when you know that the Warwick's going to be here. And when you're scanning now, you have a look. Okay, nothing. The Tristana disappears off the map. So, like, leave. Walk this way. You know, like, you don't know what's going on. Like, the Warwick could be here. The Tristana's rotating, but you know these things. Now she gets baited into going back in for no reason, and Tristana makes the collapse. And again, the rewards or punishment for that early not killing Tristana is that she's now fed flowing side to side and Karma can't do anything about it. That is the way it is. And now you lose your grub to the Warwick, who is not a champion, and uh, puts a deep board on your wolf camp. Now you go to the bottom side. You say, guy, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. Yay. I am doing the Krugs. Now I can do the red. All of this is good stuff. Draven's winning, but I'm not ganking it. Why would I use it? I've got my ult up in a little bit, but look at this. Look at this. The vein, the milio, they've turned it around. And now Tristana, again, is free flowing while Warwick's on the top side. There we go, there we go, there we go. Double bomb and one more attack and we can leapfrog away. Vi's not like, oh man, I should do something about this. Flash Q, auto attack E. Oh, that was easy. Reacting too slow to these scenarios is going to cost you in the quest for Master T. You've got to be driving the bus, not a passenger. The moment that Justana's is driving the bus and everybody else is a passenger. However, as the jungler, it's on you to be said driver. And if you're not, you're not going to climb. And because she focuses on the quadrant first, now we've got a gargantuan waste of time. I'm going to do my red quad. Ah, ah, like, she's literally treading over ground. She's already walked over multiple times. And that's a loss of time control that we don't want to see. Okay? Now, obviously, the Warwick is, is not exactly doing anything in this particular game. You know, necessarily, we 20 CS with 2 on 1. It looks good and juicy. But does it feel like the Vi's in total control at this stage? You feel that energy. No, I don't. Because the top lane death, for me, seals the fact that she has no idea what's going on. The Warwick's just a being, a beast. He's like, yes, I'm going to go and ult bottom, uh, mid lane now and get a kill. Because I can. Uh, the Olaf has prior, so he's going to cut down and do the grubs. Because he can. And sure, we have four, but giving up this fifth one is critical. Because having five grubs is absolutely massive in this scenario. Morgana is rotating up, but do you even win this... 3v3, you've got to assess, right? Morgana's chucking Qs out without really thinking, but it is what it is. So, in Diamond, what you want to think about is, yes, we want those those grubs. We want that tower control, that pushing control. But it's got to be a converge, a kill conversion ratio. Can I get a kill first and then take the grubs for free? Is a jungle somewhere else so I can do it for free? You just kind of walked over to the grubs. Wasting a lot of time here. The war goes and gets a kill. Olaf has pride. You're sitting there naked doing it. You get punished for it. It is what it is. And now we're just randomly rotating to fights that we think we can, you know, deal with. We have six seconds on Q still. So we're going to go and ult the Tristana, which is great, but we don't have chain CC locked down. And now the Olaf's just going to kill us for it. You know, it's better just to do the walk around here. And the Olaf will kill everybody, in fact. Wow. So here, why Q over this wall? Just walk around it. You know it's warded 99%. I know you're trying to save time, but they're so pushed up. It doesn't matter that it's warded. 
push on in, get your kills, all right? Now, because she didn't do that, they're in a horrible situation. I've done 1,200 gold at the moment. There you go. Which doesn't feel like much. But if you were in this game, would you feel like, hey, we can win this? Because now my Draven's 461 and Vayne's 132. And even though the Tristan is the one that's fed and the Olaf is the one that's fed, what lane did Vi have impact? On what lane did Vi have impact? Where she could totally say, I caused this lane to win. None. Zero. Zero. She's lost a dragon. She lost two grubs. She's going to lose this dragon. The objective game is going against her. She's coin flipping a fight against a team in which they have a deficit. Now's not the time to go in and try to steal dragons. This is a very silver thing to do. You know, there's a difference between diamonds who are going to get masters and you can see it in their ability to read the game. And then those that are just going to be diamond stuck. Both these junglers are not impressing anything of a master to capability. And you look at the Tristana, you're like, well, it's Tristana. Then how come it's every laner, right? Like every time there's a mid laner that, or a solo laner that, that, that is a high elo play and they do this in diamond, you're like, but they're playing this, they're playing this. What, like jungle doesn't have champions that do this? Yeah, they do. So, while we're not mid laners, the fact that Tristana makes the outplay with her gold income, goes back to base, survives, comes back with the gold uh, item lead, uses it on Karma to try and get a kill. She dies, unfortunately, for her, but that's well played to the Karma. In the meantime, she rotates to the bottom lane, she rotates to the top lane, she rotates to the top lane again, she rotates to the bottom lane again. She's using her power across the map in a very powerful way that's offsetting losing lanes and is allowing her lead to change the narrative of the game, which is what a jungler does, which is why mid laners are so damn good when they're good. And as a jungler, you cannot be out jungled by an enemy mid laner. Now, I know it's tough against Tristanas and Talons and, and Zeds, and it's really frustrating. Like, I get you. I, I feel it because of the, my, the nature of my champions, too. But I can guarantee you that if my sole goal was climbing as soon as possible, I wouldn't pick Zyra jungle. Like, I just wouldn't do it, right? That, like, it's not worth the struggle for these situations. I will pick the Belveths of the world, and I wouldn't actually pick Belveth, but something like that. The Kindreds, the Rengars, most likely, where I can cut that enemy mid laner off, or I can be making that impact somewhere else. But I can tell you something, as a... It doesn't matter what I'm playing, like a Mundo's Eye or whatever. When I've got a winning bot lane like I did here, and I ganked it first, I'm ganking it again. I'm counter ganking when the warrior comes down. Like, I'm structuring my game plan, and I'm making sure this Draven gets snowballed. This Draven is actually able to help me carry the game. And who on the blue team could say, yeah, my jungler really helped me? No, she just reacted to and, and got to stuff. The warrior, bless his soul, did the same thing, but he's still 4 Two, four now, he's the same CS basically in minus one camp. He's hitting the turret with the grubs he got. Beautiful, exactly. Get plates. Has the Vi hit the turrets at all? No. Hit the turrets with your grubs, especially pre-14. Focuses, like, why isn't the Vi pushing with her team here to get plates? Force rotation. He's top, he's mid. You have HP advantage, plus your ult's coming up again, and you're still powerful without your ultimate. Why are we not helping push this? There's no reason to fall back to Krugs here. Sit in the bush, shove it up, say, guys, look, we got 30 seconds. We have four grubs, can we get some plates? Like, treat this as you would treat a herald. Like, imagine, if I had a herald in season 13, what would you do right now? You drop that son of a bitch, and you, <laughs> you go and hit the turret with it. To just over two plates, it's a free turret you guys can take before 14 hits. That hasn't changed just because you got grubs. So, assume that mentality, alright? And then you'll observe, honestly, greatness. Because even if their whole team rotates to defend this, and guess what they will? Look, you got your Q off, right? So that's an interrupted Tristana. She's got to die. These two, like you're looking at most likely the triple kill for someone. If they can test the same way, you got a triple kill. But mostly you're there just to prevent the Tristana from doing this. Instead, the Tristana, super duper fed, gets more super duper fed while you're farming your jungle. And your grubs are useless. All four grubs have been useless. And so in this complete diamond jungle coaching, uh, we're focusing on jungle, not late game. That's why we're focusing on this early game so heavily. And I'm being so animated with you guys because I love watching diamond junglers. I hate watching Diamond Junglers, but I love watching Diamond Junglers who want to be Master Tier shift. I love watching that growth. I, I, I just, I love it. I love seeing someone like this Vi become a Master Tier Jungler, right? Tudor helps in the private server. He hit his Master Tier for the first time in December. It was, it's, a, it's been a great thing to watch that special climb that transforms uh, your view on the game, really. You know, it, like, it changes who you are. Really nice Q on the Warwick R there, though. That was nice. We do like that, but that's because Warwick's not a champion. <laughs> really. Uh, easy snack. The Tristana's still bottom lane here, but again, no turret damage, no kill conversion ratio. Now it's tough. Like, you get a kill on the jungler, and you can't even get the objective because the enemy bot lane and the vein are still more powerful than you, even at 136. So it adds up. It really does add up. Watch the Fog of War here. Always dip down in case. 
they get a free herald for no reason. Like no jungler, no Tristana, and they get a free herald. Uh, well, Draven died again. So what does this kind of remind you of as you watch this Vi? Again, trails all the way across the map here, has a thousand gold with a dragon coming up. You got a thousand gold with a dragon coming up. You're losing the game. You need to make a stand and make a fight at the second dragon, third dragon, back to base, maximize whatever the hell it is you're buying and try and win that fight. That's the, the way to kind of prevent this nonsense happening, which people, again, just don't do. So, here we go. Bye, Q's in the other direction. And now the Olaf just walks into a Draven. Look, the Draven's running it down in a passive way. Like, I don't think he's actually inting, but he's just, he's trying to do things because he's Draven and no one's around him to support him, but he's not as strong as he should be to get it going. And obviously at this particular stage, look at this. When I told you at the beginning, please end your games, this is what the Tristana is doing. Learn from this Tristana. Learn from Belveths who do this. Learn from Shin Chao's who do this. Learn from the meta junglers who just get leads and end the game. They've got the Herald here. They've got three dragons. The Warwick, while he hasn't done much, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter because he's still here pushing with his team. Two, uh, two mites plus a Herald equals an inhibitor. Now imagine with four, right? You can end the game so damn quickly. They retract. Nothing happens for a little bit. Blue team are now sitting in a negative map state. Garen split pushes beyond vision line. Yes, it still happens even in, in Grandmaster, actually, but it is what it is. Now you try to clear your camps as much as you can. This just started taking your red, so you're going to be slowly starved out. And if you're a scaling cop, you can wait and farm and hold and chill and do your best, but uh, it looks like there's a mental give up, but it doesn't matter that it's a mental give up because honestly, uh, you're never winning this game as the blue team now. Like, you're just not winning this game with a turret champ. This is the way you climb to Master Chief. By, by winning games with this sort of direct attitude and this, this powerful just... Look, we just went from 15 to 20 and the game ended. Covered a huge thing in my other Discord about mid-game spikes. Uh, the private one, the Vakaido GG one. So that's on that private library, but it's a huge thing about mid-games. And I basically just say, in summary, make sure you hit that 15 to 20 minute marker the right way with Grubs and Herald, and you will win games easily at the moment in this season. And people who do that look like the red team. People who don't look like the blue team. Don't be like the blue team in this game. I'll just jump into it. The voice is slowly drifting away from me, so... What we're going to have a look at today, I think, with a lot of cases is, um... You know, with McCade and with Black Recall is, is um... Is, some um, mid-game transitions, because... As I mentioned in the patch notes, and just as a prelude to what I think is, is going on, at the stage uh, analytically and strategically. We don't have eight minute, nine minute, 10 minute heralds, right? Like they don't exist. So you can't go bust open a top turret and then end the game. Well, <laughs> not really in the game, but you know, open the map up at already nine, 10 minutes with a fed top later and you with like five plates running around eviscerating people, right? With a mythic. Uh, that cannot be done. So when we take the grubs, we're not getting the same visceral impact. What this means is that your mid-game transition is not going to happen at 10 minutes, right? Um, and therefore, people are thinking snowballing is down. Snowballing is down, 100%. But it's not removed, yeah? It's down from 8 to 12 minutes, but that, there, that time right there comes back at around 15 to 20 minutes. It amps it up. And this is what I was trying to explain with the grubs overall. If you have four to six grubs, even three grubs, but like four to six really, and you get, you know, a dragon or so, and you get to 50 minutes, one pick can equal one, two, three, even an inhib if you have six. So it's really like that snowball that happened here at, you know, eight, nine minutes now doesn't occur, but it will at 15 if you make a mistake. So it's really that transition, that mid-game mid transition people are struggling with is because they're hoping that the first three grubs of the six grubs that you get at 12 minutes are going to have the same visceral impact that an original Herald had. It, it doesn't work that way. It's almost like the foundation for battering ram. you got to build your battering ram up and at 15 minutes you can actually use it. Yeah? Before you just get a free tank at eight minutes and you can just run through. Um, so now it's a bit more like you have to build your battering ram a little bit and spend some time doing that. And people are not. People are not. So, 
We have a mid-game transition here. Let's go ahead and have a look. What we got. We have a nice uh, 502 black recall. Now I'll be joining you, Kappa. Won't be you. I will be joining you guys. I'm gonna come down to plat. We'll have fun. So <laughs> Toots as well. I don't, I don't think Toots will. Accidentally, Toots will just get challenger. Um, right. We have two grubs. They have one grub from the first secure, which means we've got three available here to get mites. So let's just look at the ending of this early game. See what happens. Maybe this resonates with some of you as well. We come out of base. You know, above us on the bottom side, you go straight out of base to grubs. Very, very nice. We like that. Just uh, had a coaching session earlier with Black Recall, but also recorded some stuff for the other channel. And, um, you know, I had a Graves. Like an Echo had him based, and he had to base. Like he had to, had to. And the Graves was down here, and knew we could come out of base and go straight for the grubs. Guy goes for camps first. Why? You know, why would you want to do that? And so here Black Recall does what I've been saying. Like, just go straight to it. You have the tempo. Belvest's like, yes, grubs. And Black Recall's like, uh-uh, I already, I already got him. Huge, right? So now we got five. Now, if you're tracking properly and you know Belvest on the bottom side, you should, know she, you, you should know that she's on the top side. All right. So we're going on a little adventure, which I have no issue with, provided you know you can beat the enemy against you. Unfortunately, Belvest is un peu cringe. She is a cringe, disgusting champion. Uh, no offense to Crazy Valley, but she is. Uh, no one likes her, you know? Most people ban her. Because she just queues around and dodges absolutely everything with insane ability and then sucks you and you die. However, when you fuse good jungling with a good Belveth, that's when you get something respectable, which is what we're making Crazy Valley do. But most Belveths are bad junglers and just run around coin flipping and they win because Belveth. But, uh, you can say that all oh, you like Crazy Valley, you know why you play this champion. There's a reason for this, otherwise you'd be playing Warwick. So, Grace is not exactly innocent in this particular case, but the problem is now, she has one Q. So what you have to do is observe which direction can she use the Q, right? Now she's got two Qs, which direction can she use that, those Qs? And what you're doing is you're moving away from her to create space from the auto attacks, when you should be looking to distance yourself when she Qs, right? Because when she now can queue towards you, you don't have an E to reposition away from her. That's what you really want to be doing. You don't want to be hit by this, you want to stay away, like she hits you with that one. Now she's got one to go on you. Okay, now she's got the other two directions, and now you're like, well, I can do nothing. Now she can react to you by just dodging your Q. Alright, and honestly, you want to hold that Q as long as possible, because you're only going to get one proc in a go. So, while you could definitely win this fight, it is very tough. So I ask the question as follows to most of us. If you're facing a Belveth and you have total and utter control of her, why in the living hell would you run at her? Well, it doesn't matter about misplays. So I'll make Crazy Valley feel bad. Two just trying to get me to go back to my Rengar because I've, I've played a little bit and it, it feel, it, I just don't have the confidence right now, but like I've put in, like, you know, I've got a thousand games of Rengar, right? So I want to make Crazy Valley feel afraid. Crazy Valley, imagine if I'm the Rengar that leaves the base, you takes all five grubs, and I know you're topside. What am I doing? I'm ulting you, and I'm killing you within a microsecond, because I can do that. If I'm Zyra, maybe I could kill her, but all she has to do is dodge one of my E's with a Q, so why would I even bother? <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye, uh, uh, Belveth. I'm going to take my camps. I'm going to go mid lane. I'm going to take this, these plates. I'm going to take your, your Raptors. I'll kill the Azir. You know, maybe I'll kill bottom lane. You know, like I'll do everything to your map that you can do nothing. Yeah, she does have t uh, plated steel caps, worth noting, uh, but again, I don't really put much stock in that at all, because this is a very good stat. Thumbs up. Lethality. Good good stat, lethality. Very, very fun and enjoyable statistic. So, when you're having struggles with mid-game transitions, as Viego, as Graves, as most junglers in this case, think about the power you hold, Right? Think about the power you hold here. You know, imagine it's the 9th century, all right? And you've got a machine gun, all right? The threat of the machine gun is pretty powerful, especially in the 9th century. You probably won't have to use it more than once as a demonstration. Now, currently, you don't need to demonstrate it because all Balveth has to do is press tab and see, shit, man, I have a 20 CS deficit. I have no grubs as Belveth. My bottom lane is winning. 
but I am physically way far behind the graves. The threat of your power is more important here than you demonstrating it on her. Because if you demonstrate her on her, what is she again? A rat in the box. What do rats do when they're cornered? They start chewing through your stomach lining. So she starts to do that. And then what she realizes is, wait a second, human beings be squishy. I can chew through that. And so now she knows she can beat you even if she's down a thousand gold. The threat of your power is more important than taking your dick out, which too many jungles want to do. All the time. Yes, I am strong graves man. I run in your jungle. Yes, I show you my gun. And then the, the, this person's like, well, I got nothing else to do. I guess I have to fight. I have to fight. Oh, wait, I won. <laughs> I won. I am strong. And, and like, why even? Because now basically Balbeth's like, shit, if the graves comes here, man, whew, if graves comes here, I'm doomed. And so you can go, exactly. Don't forget it. And now you're going in Gazir and you push the wave out. You go here and Balbeth's like, ah, oh, shit, I can't go there. Let me go here. Oh, I got Raptors. But Graves like, I take all of this. I gank this. I spank this. Now I got templates. Right? And the Balbeth's like, wow, this sucks. Because she thinks you beat her. So there's a lot of mental warfare that goes on here as well when you have a lead. And basically, you just forced her hand into desper desperation. And as soon as you E there, the Balbeth knows, oh, wait, this guy doesn't know how to play for some Balbeth. And so she kills you. Gotta save your E. Now, Rango shows up. Oh, well. I didn't have to imagine it. There you go, Crazy Valley. Enjoy your pain and your death. So, already, I bet McCade's in the same situation with Viego, where he's like, let me show you my giant sword from the Shadow Isles. It's like, you don't have to do that. Go use it on someone else. The enemy jungle's out of the game. Like, don't give them an opportunity to go back into the game. Rat in the box. Give them the topside quadrant, control everything else. Yeah? And now... You show up. All right. Hold the wave, please. Thank you very much. If you're feeling a bit strong, or your mid laner didn't die and they're down here, what do we do? Shove, shove, shove. You have six grubs. Make sure you shove. Get all the plates you can. Make sure you control the game. There's nothing to rhyme with that. Well, Beth now shows bottom wave. And now you're like, yes. Okay. All right. Oof. We like it. Black Recall is by far the most receptive lane ganking listener that we've ever had. Just listens to my, my lane ganking request. Like, do more lane ganks, Black Recall. Unequivocally. Yeah, but like... The Herald's useless. Like, honestly, Herald... Well, not useless, but it's significantly weaker than it used to be. And 99%, you're going to go off in the other direction and hit this wall anyway. And I have five grubs, you know? The problem with Black Recall here isn't that he's necessarily giving up the Herald. It's that he gave you power. And he also didn't get to use the grubs sooner for plates. If he didn't sign his own Death Warrant here and just kind of use it for a gank here, shove this out, counter jungle, push this and hit this, he could go straight back to base now and come and contest this. And his threat would be enough, especially with the Rengar R being available, and it's above Beth, so Balbeth's already crying at the Rengar. So there's a potential here that you can contest this. But with Balbeth showing up down here, I don't mind, right? I don't mind if you kind of focus on going this. But now you got to push. This turret's got to be gone, right? As you're showing up, now you feel the desperation a little bit, and that's the problem, right? That's the problem. This has to be gone if you're giving Balbeth the Herald. Like Crazy Valley knows this. If you're giving me a free Herald, you've got to be forced to exert pressure somewhere else. And I think that challenge here, this one mistake you all make at this moment, throws an advantage you might have. And obviously, you know, you see the Azir coming, you know, what do you do here? We go up. Yeah. Up. Go. Don't stay and die. Like, I know you want to greed for it, but just walk away. Just walk away. So, you give a shutdown to Balveth. Yeah, well, I mean, I think if you say I saw him too late and you're honest about that, then I believe you. But there should be no way you see him too late. Like, you have more than enough time just to pfft, skeet out, right? No stress. Because of this death, Balveth and Aurelia get to shove this. Oh, she actually used it correctly. There you go. Oh. And so here, 
The Herald of Belveth, as cringe as it is, is being rewarded, but it's not being rewarded by good play. It's being rewarded by our, our own deaths. And 99% when you struggle to transition from early game to mid game properly, it's because you make a mistake. Enemies are allowed to make a good play, sure, but I reckon mo more often than not it's, it's us making a mistake. So cringe. Just get the wave, save the turret, get the wave, save the turret. Take the gold, don't worry about the Belveth. And obviously your bottom lane was losing already. That's why for me, that's why for me it's just such a big thing. You took this beautiful. Right, now can we get into lanes and, and make this impact felt? Because top lane was struggling. Mid lane was neutral, and bottom lane was losing. So you had basically two losing lanes and one neutral lane. How can I use my 5 grub, 5 kill lead to change the course of history, basically? And you chose to go for the ego check on the Belveth. Instead of saying, look, I need to translate this to lanes or we're going to lose. And Belveth didn't have to do anything. She got a shutdown on a Herald and then just went with a Fed Aurelia mid lane and boom. We greeted and we died. But this was a nice lane gank. That's still possible. So when you struggle to convert from early game to mid game, I would look at that. But now... There's a dragon available. You do this a lot. One word, then shove. One ward, then shove. Yeah. One gank, then shove. Like, push up. Get plates with grubs. You got five. Use the grubs for plates. Use the grub for impacts. Don't waste your lead trying to kill things that don't matter. Like, if you ki even if you kill Bavetia, what happens? What do you gain from this? Nothing. Like, she's useless. She's dead. She's down a thousand gold. You know, now Aurelia sees you, Azir sees you, so now they know where you are, they're going to sag off, and you're not going to get these ganks off. So you're going to be forced to go to these camps, maybe gank this, maybe you kind of gank the, the Belveth, maybe you get the kill here anyway, and you shove it, and you get this turret. Okay, that's, that's not so bad, right? But then Belveth will go straight out of the base and take the Herald, and the same thing will happen. So that's, that's kind of where I view it. And obviously here, you don't have the numbers, everyone's losing. How do we win these games, guys? Take your camp, take your camp, take your camp, observe, take their camps. Help this, push up, use your plates, get the bounty, shove it up, force rotation, sag off, go back to base, do it again, hold the waves, hold the waves, hold the waves, give her the dragon, give her the dragon, give up the soul, just don't die. Uh, no, you do do this normally, but you do it for like a level 4 skull or crab, Cac W. But yes, in the mid game you usually don't do this. But I don't think you're out of it, I just think you feel like the game's gotten away from you, and uh, you're forcing it. When I'm, like, trust me, if I'm sitting in this position as a, even a Zyre, I'm relaxed. Problem is, I'm not really in this position as a Zyre anymore because my items are shit. My build paths are shit. Despite them saying they're going to buff mages, if you rush the Andrews in the jungle, you're probably better off playing Zack and Nunu. You know? It's better on them than on Carthus and Zyra. That's not even a joke. So, here, just say, doof, 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 accept. Yeah, copy and paste from the Evelyn game from the coaching session. Yes, exactly right. Which will go up with the Vakaya to GG coaching Discord, hopefully by the end of the week, guys. So you'll start to see season 14 content start to go into the library. Uh, now the coaching's back this week. So, yeah. <clears throat> and from this, you lose a dragon. And now you farm it up a little bit, but now it don't matter. You know, you're fed, you're strong, you're decent, but you're not fed enough to carry this. And that's the problem. The problem is you're not strong enough in relation to everyone in the game. And when we talk about 1v9s and carrying losing lanes, what do we need? Be stronger than everyone else in the game. So, let's see, fellow junglers, if this translates to, you know, other people's games today, because that's a big thing we're going to look at. Um, so you won 0-3, um, you've done a solid job early... Uh, you've got three grubs to zero, and the second grubs of spawn. So, very similar situation, right? Interestingly, a very similar situation. So, let's see. Let's see what we can get out of this. All right. Uh, dragon wise, we got a dragon as well. Gold wise, we're 3 5, up 600 gold against Dio, or otherwise known as Ivan. Although, I would laugh if these two actually met. Was Dio here? Did it leave? Dio um, likes to play Ivan now, so I'd kind of. Toods, aren't you curious of watching Dio vs. Crazy Valley randomly match up an Emerald? I'd laugh. That'd be, that'd be a good time. 
All right, um, so we again cover the base. We see the, the Ivern on the bottom side. You're going to get your soul reset from the first grub, as the rules are. You snack all, and now instead of being like Barack Recall where you go into the jungle, which I think you could have, right? But your Irelia is basing. You decide to try and translate this to the top lane a little bit, which, you know, I don't hate. But if you know that the Ivern's on the top side, um... It's something to be wary about, but obviously the, the Akali wants to reset here. Yeah, it's just to push in. Exactly right. But if you can get a gank off, if you can push in, if she needs to, it doesn't matter. You're giving her something. And I, I, like, that's value. That doesn't matter. This is value. Like, Black Recall could have done the same thing here. Oh, uh, you know, I wanted to gank Azir, but Rex wanted to push in. Okay. Let's just do that. And I can go counter jungling gank bottom lane. It's about the position. So... You fall back to your red side here a little bit. Keep eyes on the minimap. We loop back up for the AA Tron. Here we go. He's level 9. It's worth noting. Uh, we just keep auto-attacking. Get that true passive damage. We press E suck. Nice repeat gank. I like it. We can take this turret. Ivern's on the bottom side. There you go. Six grubs and a Belveth. You know this is all gone because you just saw Ivern on the top side. You see him fisting your rally, you translate this over to this brush. Say no, Daisy. Pushing this a little bit as well. Could also go deep here if you wanted. Because he's low. You can always go deep here if you wanted, especially if Vex is dead. Two bot. Ivern chugged. Let's get in his jungle down, right? Yeah, you held your W, exactly right. That's exactly what we're talking about. Holding your W. Like, could we not just go in to the like this is what I'm trying to tell Coyote as well? You know, get fed and now, like aggression, right? Belveth, Kindred. Silas, champions like this. I've got a big lead. Let me take your stuff. Right, exactly right. But the difference between this and the Black Recall's case is that the Belveth can beat us, will snowball heavily from it, and isn't knowingly compromised. The Ivern is half HP and he's a tree. Well, what it, like the Vex is 0 for 1. And Aurelia just killed her. So you're coming and your death timer is at 17 seconds. So that means you've got what? 42 seconds before she's back on the map probably? Nah, 35. You know? She's just respawned. Yeah, we're like 20 to 25. Let's go. Take the raptors. Right? It's warded. Who cares? Take it. The guy's going to show. I'll kill you. Watch the bottom lane. They'll rotate. What does this do for your bottom lane? Gives him breathing space. They're losing. Hardcore. Gives him space to say, whew. Varys and Zareth are gone. I can, I, can, I can get some of the CS. That's nice. I have no issue with you tunneling on the bot lane as a kill. But there's no reason you can't grab some things on the way. Pushing the map forward, right? That's what it means to, to, to snowball your leads. Also, Nami isn't even on the field. So you're going to go for this, which is great, but it's a Zareth. All he's going to do is hit E, hopefully. He does flash. Oh, Okay, okay. Well played. Well played. Well played. Yeah, yeah, no, like, it, it, woof. But still, well played. I can guarantee you in a coaching session... Oh, goodness gracious, shoot me now. Um, so anyway, yeah, I can guarantee you in previous months, you would have died there, mechanically. You're much more patient with your spells. You're thinking much more about what the Xerath is going to do. You knew what you wanted to do with the chase down. Definitely close. But we have to make those plays sometimes. But in my mind, and I'm, I can definitely be wrong on this. I know this. But I can easily do Raptors, push them off, take this easily, and then gank with Nami showing up. And I can make it a more guaranteed free gank, 3v2. But that also means you might miss the window. So really, guys, all I can tell you there is just, it's a bit of a balance, right? What is the window? In Tudor's case, he doesn't give a shit about this. He can just W down and watch up people with the entries at this point, right? He's got Koenig, Rukern, um, and, and off you go. Well, frozen and Frozen Harden, there you go. De dead bottom lane, no stress. Right? He doesn't care as much about this, but you are a Belveth. You are a Graves, you are a Silas. This is important because you've got to make sure that this guy stays down as long as possible because eventually, I mean, like, I don't think you need a ghost here, but sure. You know, why not? Make it funny. You've got the tree here. You want to keep him down as long as possible. So yeah, keep in mind that. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Now from this, the Vex is going to reposition. It really shows over here. We have no bottom lane, obviously. Um, yeah, we can do nothing about that. Get out, get out, get out. 
It's fine. No, it's dismantled. Like, you can do nothing about it. Honestly, here, I just finished off my blue quad. Like, ugh. I know you're worried about this. What do we have? 2,000? Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I can get a bit, I can get a bit obsessed, but yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. You just want the Herald here, but like, see, this is my point. You didn't go for the Herald right away. You went for the top quadrant, so like, in my mind, watching the map there, from our perspective, I'm like, you know, I think I got time to do the blue side quadrant reset, go straight for it, and then if nothing's possible, I can shadow. But now the problem is, you can't shadow if something happens, you have to go bottom, which means you'll lose this pressure. So that's why I kind of like to do this. If I feel like no one's really going to go and do this from the blue team, I can reset, I'll be top side. I have much more control now um, over the potential of this, this secure. So now you're going to cut in and you should be able to get it, no stress, right? That's fine, but what if? You know? Like, what if? And that's always my mindset. Like, okay, I just want to prepare for a worst case scenario and a best case scenario. Yeah. But you ended up in the same situation, you know? That's not a big thing. It's really a tempo thing and an observational thing. It's, it's not like there's one that's super right and super wrong. It's just, what's the best position to get this Herald and to keep my sequencing under control? Everybody loves Aatrox and Sundered Sky. Super fun items. For sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sundered Sky, like, just, just remove the heal. So you jump on this sucker right now. With two mid lane, with Ivern seeing crossing. We saw Ivern crossing the minimap. You know you probably can't beat this guy by yourself. Uh, you don't have Lovely Lovin' yet. I'm worried about you being collapsed here. Let's see. Vex rotating. All right, all right, we're, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. We are currently alive. All right, we get away with it. Misclick the Herald. I don't hate the play. This play, if everyone's categorically somewhere else, is really, really juiced. But I'm always just, you know, like, if you jump in this, I could see a world where these three just immediately rotate. Now, obviously, they're preoccupied, right? And they focus on this turret, which is what gives you this window, and that's why I like the play. We've talked about this. Okay, well, I can do nothing about mid, but I can take this. So it's good pressure. It's good pressure. Again, my more conservative nature with things, not good, right? I know that with my champions that this is more my, what I have to do, but in your guys' case, this is good for you. So I'm always, I'm always, for me, this is always the balancing act. My macro is super, super good, but sometimes you need to be able to take this moment Clench it and control it. And all of you here play champions that need to do this. Only like the Karthus and the Zyra is that where you kind of want to do this, but also it's like, I don't need to do this risk because I'm winning and I will win because, you know, I'm this far ahead, it doesn't matter. But when you really want to push a game out in this mid-game transition, this is a good play. Because you watch this, you see the three, you sag off back, nice. You know, cool. Good read, actually. Spot on. Obviously now we want to take this and get out quickly. Uh, here's where I get nervous because you got a thousand in pocket. Their whole team's here. You don't have Vayne. If we win this fight, it's results based. I'm definitely a numbers advantage kind of person. Uh, the Aatrox has already been quite difficult for us. Yeah, there's the Aurelia dying. In this case, nine times out of ten, I'm already on the other side of the map doing my red. Uh, my guys, why are we here? So, yeah. Good detach. Good detach. Turrets, 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 turrets. More turrets. Segway down, segway down, segway down, segway down. Okay. I can see it, but what do you see now in, in review? What do you see now that's a, that maybe it's just a less risky play? Because you got a lot of gold now. 1,500. I would just go... Take another one. Like, I would do that because what this does is just absolutely, like, from their perspective, man, they just lost every turret outside of their base. What does that do mentally to a team? You know what it does. It absolutely just straight up wins you a game. So while, you know, a lot of us here can't do what the Belveth just did, I know Viego can definitely impact this a lot. And, you know, that's just where my mind goes. Now we go into the back line here. Nami shows up. Vayne, do it! Do it! Ah, good job, Blast. She actually did something. 
But now we're not really gaining anything, are we? Like, what are we really fighting and dying over here, guys? What are, what, what are we getting? Versus, I just got every single turret, rent to base, bought good cash monies, go back out to the dragon, and now we can just mega fight and end. So this... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter, though. Dragon's coming up, you get another one. Yeah, we're just chasing kills now. And what this does is it allows them to push this out. Allows the team to rotate. Allows you to get... Short. Timbers... Uh, what, what, not Timbers, Daisy. Flower. Okay, Sunflower. There you go. Yeah, all of this is... All of this is, like, nonsensical. Push, take, snack, snack, push, take. Back to base, buy. No dragon. Snack, 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 snack. Cut up. Baron's available. We go Baron now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when people struggle in this 15 to 20 minute mark, this is what I'm talking about. I opened this coaching by saying the grubs, when you have six, can open up the entire game. You saw three mid and said, hey, no, fuck it, let's go. Let's go. Bush. Snack. Kill. Boom. 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 Like you, you literally just took what I said in the beginning and could have completely taken the entire map. That's insane. At what point in, in league history were we doing one, two, three, four turrets, one, two, three counter jungling moments, and two kills? In a two-minute span. When when does it ever happen? ZZ Rot, you know? Like a split-pushing ZZ Rot Banner of Command meta or something. From years ago. That's how you win games now. This 15 to 20 mark. And look, you're, you're smack in the middle of the window, I said. This is a perfect point for exactly what I'm saying. It's a great use of the Herald as well with the six rubs. Huge. But because we chase around a little bit, again, you stall out. You give them windows back into the game. And even though it looks like you're going to control this absolutely fine because of that play. So again, well done. Definitely, I didn't see that. Definitely, you know, I could sense my, my, my reservations coming in with champion pool. But that's a personal thing, objectively, as a coach. I, I like what you did. And if you're playing a champion like this, that's what you should be doing. I don't think you should be sad. I think this is good. This is significantly improved. And again, what I like about your Belveth is you're, you're look, you're... You're not a typical Belveth. Like, you're not this invading, psychopathic PvP Belveth. You're trying to be a good jungler at Belveth. You know? Like, you, you've never cared about KDA. You just know that you can win these fights, and if I just apply good macro with Belveth, there's my strength. You're not really obsessed with, like, the PvP and outplays. You, you're just like, look, I'm just here to take turrets and win games. Take objectives, map control, and win games. And that's great. And you see, you will... But all I can say is, that's probably the only play you've missed. See, like, there you go. Oh, he's still pushing. Now it doesn't matter. Like, now you just kill everybody. Join up with your team. Watching two bottom lane. There we go. Now we just siege it out. Like, you literally just siege it out. I can see this. You siege it out beautifully. It's great. Very nice. Yeah, I, yeah, but that you see, there, your damage dealt to enemies is because you usually pick fights that, you're not, that are not good fights. So you end up chasing a lot, you're doing them, doing them when you have a lot of gold in pocket, or you miss ganks, or you miss play mechanically. That's where you miss your damage. But there's nothing wrong here with just doing exactly what you did. Let me push out. Let me snack these camps up. Let me repeat gank, get the kill, shove Herald, take, 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 take. There's nothing wrong with that. If you do that every game and do zero damage to champions, it's still the best play. You're putting yourself in this position of great map control. So you don't always need to do the most damage. Whereas, you know, a Coyote and a McCade with the Silas and the Viego, they can't do that as easily, so they will have to have a few more fights so they will do more damage. And Balveth obviously can do and should do, but doesn't have to. And that's the difference. That's a difference. But no, great, actually, really good. Honestly, you surprised me a little bit with that, like how assertive you were with those moves. I mean, it's fantastic. 12 minutes to 20 minutes. Okay, in this game. See, what? I, hopefully you guys are also taking away from this is the different kinds of champions we have, but also the states, right? Different grub amounts, different dragon amounts, all of that stuff. So... We have four to two, one dragon to zero, 
222 Warwick with 4.1k gold, Evelyn 4.2, so both are in, in the same situation. And uh, if we're tracking properly, which is tough with Evelyn, well, we see her there, so we don't need to track. We go for this. All right, let's see what happens. The question, how could I have played the mid game better to prevent Evelyn from ramping up? Uh, well, I have played against the 1 million point challenger OPT Evelyn the other day. And sometimes, I can tell you from that game, you can do everything possible and it doesn't matter. A good Evelyn will find a way. The question is, if she's finding a way on a fed person, sorry, on a dead person in your team, like someone who's died 20 times, it doesn't matter. If it's you, it matters. So let's see. Where does she get fed from? So that's obviously what Evelyn's going to do. She's going to get fed on the team. You go ahead and you decide to take the blue buff. The problem is the enemy team decides to show up here. This is a thing, right? This is the thing here. You go for this. Hold up. Right games. Thank you. Uh, the vision toggles weren't working as I listened. So, Diana goes up. If you guys put mid lane and this is you, I wish you to step on many Legos. Because mid laners do this the whole time. This season is very much a mid gap issue, which is why I like Dio shadowing the Aurelia. Which is why I like a lot of you guys shadowing mid lane at the moment. Basically, due to vision, you guys walked over. They saw you, everything that you were doing. The first thing you have to remember when you guys are going for blue buff invades, when you think you can invade, is not have terrible lazy pathing. That is lazy pathing. You don't know where it's warded. At all. Right now, I know the Morgana gives it away, but this is still easily spottable. Especially if it's more in the middle. So it is warded, but it's not in the middle. Remember, follow the mouse. Cut in here, just before the tree, and cut straight. If you want to avoid all vision here, you've got to do this. And uh, we showed this in the Jungle Changes video. Toots and I literally went into Practice Tool with Nuno and Volibear and walked around and stuff. And we tried different ward placements. And in order to avoid a ward in the middle of the brush, you have to just make sure you're going super tight here. There are some areas, like here, you can see there's areas of forgiveness. Um, but there, you cut in and actually get seen. Mor Morgana gives it away more. But you're also seen. And if the point is to go for the blue, there's no reason to ever cut in. Against the wall, cut laterally, be disciplined. Look for that gap. Like we always did, it's just a bit more stretched out. Diego's, Silas's, Carter's, Nunes, Warwick's, Evelyn's, Bavel's, Kindred's, any champion in the game has to adhere to this. Maybe only Nautilus because he's so thick he gets seen anyway. But it doesn't really matter. You just assume that it's warded in the right way, cut in and do it properly. End of story. No, no hesitation. There's no reason for us to cut up. Are we really going to dive a Z with a wave coming? No. So there's no reason to cut up. So the lazy part thing detects and reveals. Now, if you see their whole team collapsing in on you, don't kite towards them, kite away from them. Kite away, from, kite away from them, and maybe just try and base and get out. Yeah? Do the blue, run away, let them eat the Morgana, go somewhere else. End of story. End of story. So now what happens is, you die unnecessarily. The Morgana dies, which she would have done anyway. Oh, wait! The Morgana dies unnecessarily. Evelyn gets free real estate. Diana goes topside for no reason. Evelyn shows up, free kill. How can you stop this as Warwick? How can you stop this as anyone? You physically cannot. You cannot stop Evelyn doing this. It's not possible. All you can do is take away her camps, cut her off from objectives, Counter gank when you counter gank her when you know she's gonna go somewhere, all right? But the freebies like this, you cannot do anything about the freebies. But if you can kill the her whole team, take her whole bottom side, take a dragon, take some camps, reset and get the second grubs or get the herald or whatever, that's great. That's how you beat Evelyn. But in terms of this kill here, nothing you can do. You just have to maintain the idea that you keep getting more than she does. As long as you get more than she does, you win in the end, especially as Warwick. But pathing, surviving, not dying unnecessarily here is huge. Now we're back in the map, and again, no scanning in the river at all. 
No scanning. Like, here we go. We come out of base. The fight's still going on. We see Evelyn top lane. We rotate over. We see the Xerath here. We ult. We get a kill. That's great. Now scan. You were very clearly seen. It's the only reason they cut you off here. So if you want to go for the dragons, if you want to go for the invades here, scan. Very clearly you were seen. You would see this right here. You would clear it. You would scan this. You would move on down here. You place a control with here or here. You scan everything. You got 12 seconds of scanner. Well, you might actually get a second. No, maybe not. You got one charge at the moment. But still, principles of the trade. Scan. Good pathing and scanning. Now, team overcommits and dies. That's good. That's good. That's huge, actually. Another good way to keep Evelyn down. Make her burn her ult on you. When I'm Zyra, she goes in on me. Guess what? I full combo her. She has to ult every time, which means you can't ult somebody else. Free dragon if we can get out. This position, Ash Arrow, juicy. Auto attack, snack it up. Nice. Zed is here. Everyone's in the vicinity, so we should leave. All right. So lazy pathing. Bad scanning, huge, but good picks, good chain CC, and good kill onto the Evelyn. Here she is down to the bottom lane. She either could sequence and go up, contest the Herald, or she could hang around and kill bot. What could you do instead? Nothing. Could not help that. But we can definitely go take a whole red side and take, definitely take the, uh, no, like, don't, go take a red side. This is not as strong as it, as it, as it it's not worth this time, because you're going to get debuffed now. You're going to invest all this time doing this Herald that's warded. Because again, we didn't scan at all. Didn't check the pit. Didn't do any of that. As soon as I see Evan bottom lane, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we gank you? No? Okay, cool. Go to the blue. Now I can set up and trap. Is Evan coming to the top side? Yes, because she was just on the bottom side. She had 12 more CS. She ganked the bottom lane. Now she has to come top side, but there's no camps up. She's going to want to gank the Teemo. Why didn't I slide into the bush and we lane gank counter gank her? She has to come up here. I've taken everything. There's nothing for her to do other than to gank. So let me set a trap. That's how you beat an Evelyn and prevent her ramping up. But the freebie here, the freebie here, and the freebie here, nothing you can do about it. Again, I showed two to the, the game I'm talking about that I played in. is the same damn thing. Really. Like, it was, we were equal until three of those free kills. The only thing that kept me in the game was I was still counter jungling the hell out of her. Like, she showed up here, I was like, boof, 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 I took all three things. Without hesitation. And, and, and you have to do that with Evelyn. Because now she's going to come out of base, right? And get her whole top side. Is that worth you getting the Herald? In terms of econ? No. No, it's not. Because now you're down 1300 gold. And you're not going to match her as a Warwick. End of story. Warwick's a terrible champion objectively. So you're not going to be able to match that gold econ, that experience econ. The best you can do is keep it as close as possible. Make a pick or a play that forces her to burn her ult not on you, right? This ward does nothing. Shrooms will do a lot, though, if she walks over them. And then you're in a better spot. I think that counter jungling there would have been absolutely huge. Counter jungling, setting a trap, making the kill, taking the herald afterwards for free, fall back to the blue if you want to, reset. Now you know she's going to be in the bottom side, so you can slide on down here. Win that fight with the counter gank as well. Get into her mind. She wants to gank over pushes and squishy is. So, take shit that forces her to make a play. Counter gank her. Now you know where she's going to go next. Sit in the bush and wait for her. Counter gank her again. Her foiled attempts are worth more than you grabbing camps sometimes. Because you can, of course, foil the attempt, shove it up, take everything, and now you can fall back to camps. Your team goes back to base. And she has nothing to do. And that's how you stop her kind of escalating her game state. Oh, she's top lane again. We should have been there. Oh, dear me. We'll ignore that, but Ash Arrow into Warwick Alt. Go counter jungle her now. But now you're obsessed with the, the Herald, you see? She's top side. She's taking uh, some possible camps. I would assume she's probably taking some camps, which actually shows up right here. That's very interesting. Did she seriously just run all the way down? Okay. She bases? Didn't she just base? Didn't she literally just base? Did she really base for an Emto? I would not expect that. That's hilarious. That's not good. Don't don't ever, as an Evelyn, when you're not yet level 11, base for such a small buy with an RNG Scuttlecrab on the top and a blue buff you can steal 
and a mid laner you can kill again, and a top laner you can shadow again. Just let the Warwick play with the bottom lane. This is not going to hurt you. So Evelyn makes a mistake here, but of course you are Warwick. Whoopsie, 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 whoopsie. My bad. Where were we? Here we go. Yeah, sorry. I clicked at the end of the game. There we go. So what I would assume here is that she's taking the topside scuttle going to my blue. Like that that's 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 my assumption here. Like sorry, not scuttle, but like she's taking my blue, she's getting eleven, she's looking to cheese the mid lane. Like I, I would not necessarily assume she's going back to base. So what I would do here is once I've made that pick, sure you can activate the Herald and punch this up, which again is not a terrible idea. But what you also have the option of doing is pressing W once it's up again and getting into a jungle here. But you have to be strong enough to be able to fight her. And I feel like if we are always too weak to fight her at this point, we haven't done a good enough job of maintaining some level of parity with her. Now, this depends on your champion. If you're Warwick, if you're Rengar, then you believe what I'm saying to you right now, right? If you're a, a squishy mage, you're not going to do that. Now, she does the surprising thing of showing up down here. This, again, I didn't fully expect. She decided to use her ultimate before level 11, which means she doesn't get the benefit of the cooldown reduction, the damage. Which is a bit silly. Especially with Evelyn. It's a 20 second buff that she could have gotten. So I'm not on board necessarily with that. But uh, again, I do feel like she's just in this position where she feels like she can do whatever she wants. And it is what it is. I'll accept this. Like, oh wait, you didn't take all of this stuff on the top side? Oh, okay. There are a lot to make plays. Happens. But that's why it's so important if you take all of this and set the trap here and kill her here... That instead of being the one to drive the play and let her react, you make her drive the play and you react. Except you're not even reacting. You already set it up. It's a trap. That's the difference. Does that make sense, people? Like, that's how I like to beat Evelyn's. Take her cams, force her to go here. I'm in the bush. We kill her. She's forced to make a play. I'm already there because I knew she was going to do that. Same thing down here. But instead, when you're forcing the plays, like you force this, you force this, it allows her to rotate, clean up, and, and, and just get freebies more so than she already does. But again, it's Evelyn. I mean, she will make those plays. I don't know why she does like she Look, she's kind of juggling nothing. She's not really thinking. Another freebie. Yeah, I think if you set it up nicely, I think she still has eight kills. But then I do think you start to take over a little bit. I really do think that. Keep pinging your team all the time, right? Keep pinging your team for Evelyn. Nice kill. Nothing you know about that either? You can't. The only way you deal with Evelyn is by being on the same side. Tracking her relentlessly and counter ganking it, but that, that just cannot always be done. Champion's super strong. We're farming and she's ganking, you know? when We have no control over where she's going, we have no ping control. Uh, it's a tough one. But again, as Warwick, I don't usually worry too much about it. That plays a little... little overzealous. But yeah, it feels like they get a free dragon. It just feels like you guys stopped thinking about Evelyn at all, and there's just no respect for it, you know? But it's just a chain reaction now. Uh, in the game I played, for example, I died one time in the open field, and it was me crossing from blue side to red side, and I was standing right here in this little crack. That's where I died. She saw me, finally, and I, in the replay, you can see just hovering, looking for plays. And I'm just pinging people off and warding and tracking her and pinging and tracking and pinging and tracking. And burning her ult and making her go somewhere else. And the one time I stepped up a little too far away from the turret, I got eviscerated, just poof, dead. It's just an ultimate respect that we have to have. There's no uh, magic pill. And obviously it's Warwick. What's the counterplay? Press W. As we see right here. Well done. Nicely done. No one wanted a fist bump? See, that's how you do it. That was nicely done. But yeah, you're very much like a, a supportive tank, disengage, W, press E, press R. Like, that's all you are against an Avalon. Truly. With Warwick, yeah. But yeah, it's okay. And then in the end, who wins? You guys win? Yeah, good job. Good job. But yeah, that's how you would have stopped the ramping up, in my opinion.